Hello, everyone. Sorry, we're we're a moment or two late. That's that's on me, honestly. I uh, I had an appointment today, and then it got pushed back an hour, so I was much later than I intended to be today. Uh, let me change this background image because where where is it? That's background back, front front. This is this the one? Yes. Okay. Properties. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta change this now. Gotta make sure I'm in the right place. Uh, Kaiser Stream version three. I, I just remember because I labeled it because it was Kaiser Streams initially. Right. There we go. Jello Apocalypse right. up on there. <laughs> yes. Ew. All, All right. right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's stream. I know a lot of you were kind of blindsided by this. I was so too. Were we. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so were we. Yeah. So were we. Literally last night. Um, this entire situation with Jello Apocalypse blew up, and I was talking with Twilight about it. I'm like, "Do you think we'd be interested in covering this on stream?" And she said, "You know what? This is interesting enough. Pop, we, we we could pop it to to Kaiser and uh, Critter, and uh, that's how we wound up where we are now. Yeah, where we're actually covering this <laughs> uh, because I am just trying to put off for as long as possible going into the latter arc of Ruby to cover Bumblebee." <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to be saying a lot of the same sh stuff. I'm trying to also make sure we diversify our portfolio a little bit because, you know, I want to make sure we're covering things fairly. Uh, trying to go beyond just Ruby things. We're, we're all anime fans here. So yeah. it's like a perfect opportunity yeah. to stress test yeah. whether or not these streams can survive Holy beyond shit. Ruby. Yeah. Okay, um... <laughs> breaking update on, in the chat right now. Manga Common is on on in the in the chat. Oh, hey, Manga Common, hey. how's it going? Oh, cool. <laughs> how's it going, bro? Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Honored, uh, well, I don't know. Meet you. We we know some of the same <laughs> people, but you walk the same circles. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Why you're walking in circles, I don't Kinda. know, but you walk them and you walk them proudly. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I met Kai, his editor, like Kaiser Trigger, like a few years ago. Uh, but yes, hello everyone. I am Raymond McNeil, the uh, the primary host, I guess, of this uh, still kind of shambled together podcast. As you can tell, <laughs> me quickly changing the background here. Uh, we are we are Team Jacked. Yes, that is how it's spelled. Um, joining me uh, is a judgmental critter. Uh, that's me. I, I look different today. I wanted to be a pretty girl today. <laughs> uh, the uh, Hell yeah. ever acerbic uh, Kaiser Shonen. The ever what? <laughs> what word is that? Acerbic. It means kind of like... Uh, oh, acidic. Uh, acidic. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're calling me toxic. Okay. No, 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 no. No, no, then I'd be calling you basic. <laughs> oh, wow. It's getting sassy in here. <laughs> yeah, this is why we call you a Serbic. You see, this is how this all works. And uh, as well as the wonderful Twilight Guardian. Hello. Um, I have to go let the dog out. Be right back. Who? 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 Sorry. Um. <laughs> anyway, for those of you who are curious what we're doing today, well, a situation has uh, occurred in the anime industry as of recently. There's actually quite a few things happened yesterday. Like, there was a whole drama involving a bunch of VTubers that yeah. looked. I, yeah. I only saw, like, the very top layer of that, and it was just kind of crazy involving lawsuits. We're not here to cover that today. I just thought it was interesting to mention that. Yeah. Also, there was stuff right. with Vouch that happened yesterday. Uh, <laughs> he's a little outside of our wheelhouse normally. Um, oh, my God. Um, I, I just um, was, like, sitting and looking on. at the drama, <laughs> eating my popcorn. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. L literally, oh, he ended up... Popcorn I was, <laughs> he ended yeah. a seven-year feud between like, people. dude, all of this... All of this, all of this is just dropped on my lap this morning, and I was all like, "I, I got, I got shit to do today, man. I can't yeah. do it all. I can't, I can't look up all this stuff." The um, oh yeah, it's fine, Dead Rex. You can still doodle her as a monkey rat. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the um, better yes, yet, better yet, draw her as a rat witch. Yeah. So <laughs> the. The big topic that was for our neck of the woods 
was in relation to kind of a twofold uh, situation. For one, there's been a lot of very heated debate in the anime fandom about localizing uh, anime when it comes over to the West. So that was already a number one issue for a lot of people who are fans of anime. Number two in our circle is the uh, YouTube content creator known as Jello Apocalypse, who many of you actually might be familiar. It's one of my most popular videos is me reacting to There's Something About Ruby, which is a genuinely a hilarious video that very quickly and very accurately dissects a lot of the problems and issues that underlie Ruby's writing and a lot of the different um, mechanics therein. And it's it's just a really fun video. It's where the legendary "Why is my name spelled with a Q?" come from. Um, which, <laughs> a lot funnier than yeah. his uh, his earlier Steven Universe video, which I I sent it to my in real life friend yesterday when talking about him briefly. Um, and I re and I rewatched it as I sent it to her, and I was like, "This isn't as funny as I remember it was." <laughs> so, like, I think he got better with it after a while, but oh, well, he probably did. The yeah. other thing um, now, Jello Apocalypse is no stranger to controversy. The biggest one that he has suffered thus far is he had a very, very, very biased video about going out to vote during the twenty twenty election. I want to say it was. Um, he should have left that to, to 16. Mention insensitive. Yeah. yeah. And it uh, I'm not going to go into it exactly, but just know it pissed off a good chunk of his audience and it landed him in a lot of trouble with people. Um, and this is why 16 did it better. Right. Yes. Um <laughs> but the the purpose here is not necessarily to um talk about that particular controversy. It's to talk about a Oh, this is basically okay. That's that's it. so the series is, is this is basically and it was this is basically Ruby. That was that was the series. Thanks for the question yeah. there, JJ. Yeah. Um, yeah. He also uh, he voiced Jinxie. Jinxie the ra the raccoon nine? in Volume Nine, who is like yeah. a, a one off character, who really shouldn't have been a one off character. There's a, there's a lot of conversation we could have about the nature of the writing of Volume Nine, but that's not what we're here for today because we're not covering uh, Bumblebee, where we could talk about that. Logically. <laughs> or Ruby, yeah, nope. in, for that matter. So for those of you who are following our kind of long with my long winded explanation of these things, you might be wondering how does Jello Apocalypse meet with the anime dubbing industry? Well, I'll tell you. Apparently he got hired to help write the English dub for a series known as Lovely Complex. Or Lovecom. Or Lovecom for short. So what happened? is that on his Patreon, very recently, apparently, he made a post dissecting his work on Lovely Complex, and it did not go over too well because apparently he doesn't have the highest opinion of the show and decided to take the initiative and make some changes in his writing of it. Now, we'll get into exactly yeah. what that means in a bit, but just know that he put this up on his patreon it got screen capped pretty quickly and it exploded and now there is a massive 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 debate going on about the nature of dubbing anime more so than there ever was before so we're looking at an interesting time Which talking about the a ins lot and outs. because it was heating up oh yeah yeah <laughs> like yeah. We're, we're talking like it was already a roiling like inferno we're talking this is a nuclear yep. level like drop into that fire. Um to this the is point keep coming. It's gonna look like freaking apocalypse. Though. Well, I, I was gonna well, say like it, it <laughs> may have actually put out some of the fires by the blast radius alone. <laughs> like yeah. Like I I, yes. I I think it kind of did so much damage to one side of the argument that it may have like it, it might have weakened their position permanently yeah um also uh there's a lot of talk going along that he he may be a lying liar who lies <laughs> yes there there uh, so there's that um also uh, on short notice like this happened on such short notice that that we weren't able to properly go over lovely complex. I tried to. I spent all fucking night 
going over and watching the first 14 episodes out of 24 of the of the anime uh, in Japanese. I tried to watch it like simultaneously in English and Japanese to to look at the differences and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I I just didn't have the time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let alone, let alone go read the manga. Uh, so uh, it, 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 we're we're <laughs> we're jumping on this as hot as we can to try and cover it as soon and quickly as possible. Uh, Fools Gills gives us a donation. To be honest, I'm more interested in being entertained than having an accurate dub. Whatever sins Brendan committed, making a fun dub isn't one of them. I want to watch Lovely Complex so bad now. I would say you can watch Lovely Complex and still be entertained. The The main problem that I'm actually having is that he has such an ego about him that he claims that he basically rewrote the show entirely because it was so bad. Right. But looking at it, actually having watched the show in Japanese, I don't understand what was bad about it. I just think that he's a salty bitch exactly. who doesn't understand what quality is. So from yeah, I, like, I have I watched, admittedly, oh, go ahead, uh, I was gonna say I have admittedly haven't been keeping up with all of it because you all were doing such a good job, and I was like I'll save all my questions for the stream. And from what I've seen, it just kind of it, it looks like they didn't even use any of the things he wanted to change with the story anyway. Yep. So yep. So he he made a big stink about it, mm -hmm. and it didn't even actually come true. Well, he, 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 well, I actually have a theory about, about that. that we'll get he into did it. all this work. He did yeah. all the, Okay, okay. We'll I, I have, I have myself a hypothesis check. about why this is. Um, but An first... anime hypothesis. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, An anime analysis. <laughs> but look, like what he... He claimed that he threatened to quit the production as the only person who would work on it for free um, if the the mangaka got she she had an anime cameo. Well, um, I, but let's let's because we're going to be I'm going to be reading through the whole document. I think yeah yeah I I think we'll let it speak for itself and we'll cover points as they come up because. Trust me, right away you're going to see there are some immediate like red flags about his mentality on this project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. um no when should we go over the basic plot of Lovely so. Complex, at least to the point that I know so far? Um, I mean, I think we can introduce the, the, I think the very that's basic... at the top of the article. Yeah, I think it might be at the top. Um, we'll, we'll see what sure. he says, and if he doesn't like go into the core concept of it, then I'll let you do a quick rundown. Sure. Okay, so here we go. Getting right into this. <clears throat> Marissa and I wrote an anime dub, the lovely calm dub complication, uh, compilation video. Here's a compilation of all my favorite moments from the English dub of Lovely Complex, scripts written by Marissa, Lenti, and myself, with both of us directing the actors as well. This post is free because I wanted to talk about our work on this show, but I obviously don't want to, want to pay wallet as I don't own it. The full explanation about this show and the dub's production is below. You may find it interesting to read this before watching the above clips. It's a bit of a long and winding road to get to, uh, the, compli uh, to the compilation above, but I think it's worth it. Or you guys can just watch the video, no thoughts, head empty, and enjoy it. I hope you all think these clips are funny, because I do. All right, so far? Yeah, he... Nothing terrible, I don't think. A little self-aggrandizing, but it's fine. I think that it's a little bit insulting that he'd be like, no thoughts, head empty. It's like, yeah, because you probably don't want people to like think go critically. watch the actual sub. <laughs> yeah, think critically about this anything. Consume, this consume product and be excited for next product when they, they will totally ha let me localize anime again. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> So here we go. So he posted oh. he posted this to his Patreon as a free thing. He yeah. just like he didn't have to. Pay. Correct. Apparently. Okay. So he yep. was that excited to put this out there into the he world. Was that he thought this was gonna yeah. be. He thought this was gonna be the thing. This was the fire under his pants that was gonna get him going. <laughs> yep. Um, or you have seen nothing yet. <laughs> M3D says, in reading Jujutsu Kaisen, which has a terrible translator and seeing mistranslations and nuances lost in translation, I kind of get people's grievances. However, some complainers need to get shoved in lockers. Trust me, we have a... I, I'm pretty sure we all here have a very nuanced angle when it comes down to it. We are, we are yeah. not yeah. all on... 
we are all definitely not translate it raw and we're all definitely not change everything we 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 understand that there is a balance yeah. to a lot of these things and we'll get into that believe me um, <laughs> yeah um i will say quickly um of the the english dubbed episodes of love calm that i have watched there are very slight nuances that they take away from the japanese version of the anime that i think kind of hurts the characterization of the characters a little bit. It's not that big a deal, but it still is a bit of a shame because it yeah. it just makes the characters flatter, honestly. It certainly uh and to uh hurts to, the characterization of his characterization to, of the to, show. Yeah. <laughs> funny but like yeah and also to establish i managed to watch both the sub and dub episodes for episodes one through three um at this point i didn't have the time to go through five episodes like i wanted to but i i have some thoughts and we'll express them going going in all righty yeah. hey all at various points over the last two years my best pal marissa lenti and i were working on a dub of an old anime called lovely complex aka love calm you might have heard us whispering quietly about some uh, some kind of project in the old streams. Well, this was it. Lovely Complex is an old shoujo romantic comedy from 2007 about a tall girl, Risa, and a short boy, Otani, uh, who don't want to date because they're massive height differences. Five whole inches. Wow! Already pause. That's a whole head yeah. of height well, difference. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, you we, need to step we, back and consider... This is Japanese culture, where height can mean was a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. a short guy <laughs> yeah, in Japan like... gets fucked over pretty hard. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's, it's, I, as it's a, a short guy in, re in America, I get fucked over pretty hard, too. Like, it, trust me. <laughs> trust me. This is not, it, it, like, it's bad here. It's probably a lot worse there. Uh, yes, uh, you can find a fan sub that is not Jello's. Uh, there's there's a lot of really older fan subs that are floating around out there, as well as some on different websites. I I I actually watched through two different dubs on some of these episodes, so I could see the difference um, between oh. people's different interpretations. And for the most part, they were actually fairly accurate to each other, but some of the jokes did change depending on who was subbing it. Uh, and they were both different from the actual English dub. It's this thing starts out so kind of promising because it's mm -hmm. like, Oh, you might have heard us talking about doing this thing. There's this old anime that we're that we're working on dubbing, and it sounds like, oh, that's so cool. You just were so passionate about this old project that never got like a good enough dub that you, as a fan, is trying to like bring new life yep. into it. But instead, it's a whole spite. It's fueled entirely through and then spite. He dumps a whole. <laughs> he dumps a whole jar of mercury into the well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I I do want to say for for anyone who isn't American, um, the main female character's height is 172 centimeters, and the love interest's height is 153 centimeters. Uh, what's Very, that in freedom units? <laughs> uh, five, freedom five, uh, five foot seven for the main field female lead, and five foot one for the main male lead. Yeah. Uh, Ellipsis Mark, I sure want to speak can. up and tell you all, you guys gave me the nerve to publish my book, World of Demi Humans Freshman Orientation to Amazon Direct. Well, congratulations! Hey. Everyone, go check that Fuck out. Yeah, do. Congrats. Congratulations. World of Demi yeah. Humans <laughs> Freshman Orientation. Everyone, please go check it out. See if it's up your alley. Give it, go ahead, give it a purchase or download whatever she has it set to. He, she, I don't know if I. I, I don't know why. I just presumed she was. <laughs> I knew could be a guy for all I know. <laughs> uh, and that'll be relevant in this stream later. You'll see. <laughs> oh, um, God. But yeah, if no. I, I already, this guy is dismissing the core concept of the show as yeah, kind of is... laughable when it's like, no, it's not, the motherfucker. What? Yeah. Like both of the wait, main what? characters. Wait, 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 wait. guys, what? guys 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 you're telling me that 
English localizers do not understand Japanese culture. Well, Jello Apocalypse what? doesn't. That, that's Jello Jello Apocalypse doesn't. But... I, I want to be fair here. <laughs> that's insane. I, I that's don't. Insane. I don't want to well, make yeah, a judgment I on. I won't. I won't. Yeah. I I, I personally, I mean, you can you can. Oh, yeah, I don't want. Want, I don't I want to make whole sure. judgment on the freaking. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't want. I, I I'm slightly. I'm being facetious. I yeah. don't portray this to like Western localizers in general. I, I'm much. Wants in regards Full, to that. Full scale, um, but when as you'll as you'll see as you'll see with Jello, he is the opposite. He's gonna have a not so very nuanced perspective on the dub. Um, well, on his work here and in the series. So yeah. Also, I want to say, um, for for the average height of women in Canada and the United States, the average seems to be five foot five inches or five foot six inches. Um, and that, like, that is an average. That is taking the the tallest women and the shortest women um, and kind of, like, finding the middle ground of, like, the average height between all of women across the countries. So, like, that's not... Right. That's not tall for a Westerner um, when it comes to a woman. Like, that is above average. But for a Japanese woman, that oh, would be different nice. since... Averages, I think, in Japan are a lot shorter. They're they are more they five are foot one, four four foot eleven sort of thing. So like, the yeah. the male love interest, uh, Otani, he is the height of of a Japanese girl. So he has a complex about being considered feminine. I, I think that is actually the intent because I'm pretty sure hey, the average that's in male the title. Height, I think the the average male height over there is about five foot six, five foot seven. Like yes, maybe it little, is. Yeah, so it's like the entire idea is they're inverted what the average is supposed to be. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I was trying to get at. Is that um, he has a complex about being feminine and she has a complex about being masculine, and so that yeah. their insecurities drive a lot of the plot of the show, and also their their initial dislike towards each other at the beginning of the anime and the manga. Uh, right. Nikhil Kapoor says, I really like the behind the scenes stuff mentioned in this document. I just don't think he should have trash talked the anime in the same breath. Uh, we'll get there. Cause I'm pretty sure some of it's mixed in. Did you send that three times? Why am I getting three super chats for that? That's oh dear. Strange. I mean, I'm, seeing one. I'm not, so it might oh, be, really? that on might your be end. a glitch on my end. All right. That's strange. Um, but yes, continue with the document. If you think that sounds like the same plot as Netflix Tall Girl, a thing people relentlessly made fun of for being, Fuck quote, off. pretty stupid, well, yes, it's the same plot. Lovecom is considered a grandmother of the shoujo genre, mostly because it's Oh my it's god, old. no, it's not. Oh my god, there there are <laughs> there are female, there are shoujo anime that are much older than fucking 2001, Isn't okay? Isn't Sailor Moon considered shoujo? <laughs> It is shoujo. Yes. Yes. Shoujo has yeah. grown since the sixties. I was going to say, like, oh, wow. what the I don't fuck know, is this guy Raymond, talking about? Maho shoujo. I wonder if okay, it's shoujo. Okay, look, I, I know, but like maho shoujo versus shoujo, like strict. I, I don't know if there's a distinguishment or if it's Ma considered most. Maho a shoujo. Maho shoujo has been around for a very long time. I think one of the first ones was a. Uh, um, Pinky Momo, and I think that came out in the 70s. Um, it wasn't until Sailor Moon that uh, that action-oriented battle shoujo like Sailor Moon became a thing. Sailor Moon invented the the sailor uniform fighting as a team, uh, like a like a female tokusatsu super sentai sort of thing. That was invented by Sailor Moon, but magical girls existed before Sailor Moon. And this is why we ask questions, people. We get information. Yep. Um, but yeah, so this guy immediately just torpedoes so much of his intell intellectual like bearing by immediately a comparing it to tall girl. i've yeah. never heard of tall girl but by the way you guys talk about it it's apparently not very good oh, oh, tall girl you, is very you, bad you, you, but... you are you, you are a precious <laughs> child raymond i'm gonna say it right now tall girl was awful it's this like it has a very similar premise not entirely because it's even more focused on the main girl who's the tall tall chick but like it's really, really bad and emotionally manipulative. I, after watching the first three episodes of this show, 
Comparing this shit to that is a fucking insult. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't the tall girl in Tall Girl? Wasn't she like over six feet tall? Like it, like she was like yeah more tall than everyone else in the whole like world basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the the main thing that made her unlikable that everybody complained about is that she didn't consider anyone else's feelings but her own which is not true for the main character in lovely complex risa she has said multiple times like yeah i'm feeling bad but you don't have to um not enjoy this thing just because i'm feeling bad and her friends say no i'm going to stay i'm going to stick with you because you're my friend so how is yeah. that anything similar to Tall Girl? Because the main that thing was that she was tall girl. she was incredibly selfish. Uh, oh, yeah. The dynamic of the girl being the tall one and the guy being the shorter one, that's actually pretty common in yeah. the yeah. West. <laughs> so I don't know why Jello's first thought was, oh, that one movie that didn't even do very well. <laughs> it's almost like he doesn't watch Sorry. much Ex media. Excalibur 2343 <laughs> says, Sonic Frontiers distracted me. What have I missed? Um, you missed that ring on the left. <laughs> go, go get it. pronounce Excalibur. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it's Excalibur. I, I, I can read it. It's right there. It's, it's a U. <laughs> Can I not read it? <laughs> oh man! Oh, my glasses! <laughs> oh no! This man either runs an auto shop or a sex shop, and I'm not gonna ask which. Carter needs to get glasses for her glasses. I haven't, I've, I haven't replaced my glasses in like seven years. She, she needs to get like one of those glasses you have, like a, a national treasure, where like it folds down for several lenses, like over. over. <laughs> also, maybe I just can't read. Also. Oh. Uh, even though it came out nearly two decades ago, Lovecom did not have a dub until Sound Credence's CEO, Amber Lee Connors, grabbed the rights to the dub from Discotech because it was an old favorite of hers. Discotech did not want to, uh, to order a dub because dubs are typically very expensive, so Sound Cadence endeavored to make the dub while spending as little money as possible. This and that's admirable that's that she admirable. did this. Yeah. She did this mm -hmm. out of a passion project, and I love that so much. We need more of this. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure. Like, like I, this, yes. this is something that like the anime industry still has the chance to be more of. Is more of a roots level industry where people just do the things they want to do. And I get it that doing things for free sounds terrible. Like we we have, believe me, we we have all heard the horrors of crunch culture. From um, yep. from like the video game industry and you know anime dubbing and all that kind of stuff, but people doing things with a passion, even if they are making personal choices to sacrifice time and effort to do these things, is not an inherently unadmirable trait. Inherently, it can also be an admirable one. I think yeah. it yeah. as long as people understand what they're getting into and they are not actively hurting themselves to do it, we should encourage people putting the time and effort to make things they love a reality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the fact that Amber Lee Connors and Discotech especially, the absolute fucking champions, they have been they have been doing the most preserving this shit for ages. I even know a couple people oh. who even, well, one person who works, uh, partially works there, and they do a lot of great work. Uh, Izanagi says, okay, yeah, I'm pissed off as hell. Jello seems to be ignorant and awful, and frankly, I'm kind of glad he's blacklisted now. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, Iza. And Excalibur <laughs> says uh, both. So that answers that question. It's a two-in-one shop, I guess. Um, <laughs> get lubed while your car's lubed. Oh my god, no. There, you got a slogan. You run with it. Uh, did it do? Uh, this production was almost entirely asking people uh, to cash in favors. The leads both played their parts for free, and Marissa was set to write and direct the adaptation, also for free. <clears throat> Twas a labor of love. Come. Oh no, how witty. Mm. Not funny. Mm. To save money on all the extra Not voices, funny. most Didn't of the laugh. voices in this dub were uh, grabbed in an unusual way. Usually companies that dub anime are working on more than one show at a time. If they have an actor in show uh, in for show A and they have extra time in a session, they may bring in that actor into show B to voice some background extras. 
Because the actor is already there for another show and they're being paid the same amount of money for the same time slot, it makes sense to utilize them in multiple shows. Funny, uh, Funimation and Crunchyroll also does this because it saves a lot of time and money. Lovecom was dubbed almost entirely in this way, which is one of the many reasons this dub took two plus years to come out in a world full of simul dubs and weekly releases. Because of this, you can go episode by episode and look at the additional voices credits to tell when it was recorded by comparing what other shows those actors were in at Sound Cadence, uh, kind of like looking at uh, the rings of a tree in a trunk. Okay, you know what? That's really neat. That's a neat bit of that information. That is actually super cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, all right. Okay, we got one good paragraph. Look at all that right, guy. Jello. We Jello. All right, we're on the up and up here, buddy. All right. That's, that's it. <laughs> the other reason this right, dub took so long up. is that the production was cursed. And it's something. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Because wow. I've heard nightmarish wow. tales. I mean, we'll have I talked? I, I think I've mentioned this at least at Twilight. I've met. Um, J. Michael Tatum and I I had just watched Steins Gate earlier that summer before I met him and I basically told him how much it meant to me it was such an important anime to me and how much it pulled me through a dark time in my life and he was so thankful for it we had like a small little moment over it because apparently he had been a really 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 rough production because he was the head writer of it and we had this really just mm -hmm. very nice warm moment together and I really I hold I cherish that memory so much so I understand that a cursed production isn't necessarily for the production for the actual result isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's a it kind of sucks to go through. Yeah, um, and I think I do think what Jello is meaning here yeah. is that um, anything that could possibly go wrong did go wrong. <laughs> that yeah. I think that's what he meant by cursed. Yeah, and I think he's gonna get into it right here. Yeah. I'm not at liberty to go into all the details, but suffice to say that anything that could go wrong at some point did, as Twilight just said. Thank you yep. for repeating thank you for repeating her, Jello. Very rude of you. <laughs> Marissa's spine snapped just before they finished directing. And I had to take over directing leads for the last Ooh. third of the series because I was the only other person who would do it for free. Nobuko's actor was literally deported at one point mid production. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh wow. We often Jesus. joked about a meteor hitting the distribution warehouse once the Blu-rays were printed because the universe clearly did not want this dub to be made. Okay, more more good information. This is the good good stuff that yeah. I like hearing about. It's the production woes. It makes the finished product all that much sweeter too because it's like, man, you yeah. guys put so much effort into this. Even with the rough yeah. spots, it's like, you know what? That little sweetness and glaze it over is good. This is the the kind of really interesting stuff that I appreciate. And it can help you like understand yeah. like how certain nice like overcoming yeah. adversity. Like when you learn like that um that the studio that while they were working on Madoka Magica that there was a big flood and then you're like oh that's why some of these shots are done oh, so yeah. weirdly because a lot of things had to get changed after that happened. Yeah, or I mean, in a, in a less uh, beneficial extent, you learn that the studio cut two episodes of Ruby volume nine and you're like, Oh, that's why there was a weird uh, time skip. <laughs> and like the last three or episodes hell, or hell you, you hear about, in fact, people have heard about, you know, probably talked about a lot of the production problems, the studio Gynax, uh, when they yep. were making uh, neon Genesis Evangelion originally, and you see how the finished project is and it makes you appreciate. Yeah. Um, it, it, how it, how well it came out. Relative yeah, and to how creative they got with it. There's, um, I'm gonna show yes. Evangelion to Twilight at some point, but it, it's not <laughs> it's not the biggest spoiler. There is a scene Her at the watch. very end of the series, like one of the last episodes, where they hold on a still frame for like a minute and a half. Oh, I know about that. And it, <laughs> it fucking works. I've heard about that. It fucking <laughs> works because of how it everything works. was set up. It's like, yeah, no, that makes complete and utter sense. It's great. It's great. It's like super smart. Um, but yeah, uh, that's yep. learning this stuff is really cool. So you know what? For all of his faults, it is cool that we get to learn this from a little bit of Jello Apocalypse. This is the kind of stuff that we want to hear. Yeah. My involvement yep. started when Marissa told me she was annoyed about having to localize the scripts for the show because she had just watched through the show uh, and didn't really like the characters. 
Oh, that's not a good sign, though, is it? I thought no. this would be a good opportunity to get some extra experience in writing localization scripts in case I ever wanted to write a dub. Maybe Bomberman Jetters or something. I don't know. So I volunteered to help out. Man, I wonder if that'll ever happen for you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> The two of us spent many, many hours across many, many days slugging through Lovecom episodes, and while Marissa thought she sort of hated Lovecom's original writing, I came to the conclusion that I definitely hated Lovely Complex. Why, though? Like, you have to explain why. Like, <laughs> oh, like it's a no, job. Don't care, do your job. <laughs> yeah, like... like it, yeah. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it is still your job. You have to be a professional about this, regardless yeah, of whether I'm or not sure. you hate you, what you're working on. You still have to work. This on could it. have I'm, been an inspirational I'm moment. Pretty... This could have been an inspirational moment where he says, "I definitely hated the writing of Lovely Complex, but by gummit, I stuck through and I did my job like a true professional, and I adapted this as best I could because that was what I was hired to do." Like that right there. That could be yeah. fucking inspirational That's to everyone. That's actual professionalism. That's yeah. professionalism. Mm -hmm. it, it, because, like, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty goddamn sure that when Berserk 2016 was being dubbed, and it's, I'm pretty sure it featured a lot of the same voice actors um, that appeared in the original dub for Berserk 97. I'm pretty sure they, when they had to look at what they were doing with this fucking thing, they were mortified by it. But they were like, you know what? I'm going to take it on the chin. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Uh, and at the very least, I can make this a good audio uh, experience, you know, not counting the clanging sound effects, which haunts me <laughs> in my nightmares. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but quickly, like, Kaido yeah. Dan is is completely right. Like, yeah, you've you've attached yourself to the project for completely personal incentive, otherwise, because you're not getting paid exactly. for it. So, therefore, like, all the more reason to put your best foot forward. Oh yeah, because like mm -hmm. you don't yeah. have to be here. You could have backed out at any time. It's you, not like you're you doing had to... this for free. Yeah, like, yeah. It, yeah. It, <laughs> if, if you walked into there and said, "Look, I disagree with the subject matter of this anime." I don't think I can bring to you my best foot forward. If you have another project I can work on, I would be happy to try and give that a shot, but I don't think I can work on this one. That is also an option you could have taken literally at any time. Like, it sounds like he's and trying to, like, martyrize himself. Yes. Like, he was like, ooh, yeah, I, I so did this for free out of the goodness of my heart because I'm such a good person, but this also it was hell and I hated it. <laughs> you i have graced you with my assistance free of charge and you, and you give me this slop to work with how dare so like, why did you sign on to the like, project for up. free if you didn't know about yeah. like the story at all before <laughs> yeah really right. it, it, it's kind of also i mean i could see him being offered it and being like the idea is like oh i get to work on a dub Holy shit, that's awesome. Yeah, whatever it is, I'll do it. And then he gets there and he's like, oh, I could see that. I could see that. But again, it comes yeah. down to like professionalism. professionalism. Yep. Like if you're if you're going to work in the dubbing industry, you're going to run into anime that you probably don't like and don't want to work on. But hey, the uh, tough shit, man. That's professionalism <laughs> yeah. for you. Like, I, I know we're probably going to get into it a little bit more later, so I don't want to belabor it too much, but I feel like attitudes like these is, seems to be what's very common in a lot of common examples of uh, localizations that have been made to anime, games, movies, such and such, that have, you know, ruffled a lot of feathers over the years, especially the past 10 years. It's a lot of these very similar attitudes towards the material or elements of the material, which causes them to, you know, instead of just taking it on the chin and doing what they're supposed to do, they radically change the meaning of certain parts of the narrative. You know, they find that more comfortable. And that is the cringe. Also, uh, Dederick's art of Tweety Celtic. Uh, <laughs> oh. Very cute. Oh? Wait, let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, while you guys look that up, uh, I'm going to read this line in uh, in a gag. Sure. Okay, so 
you have the world. It is nice. It is round. <laughs> Shout out to anyone that fucking remembers that because guess what? You're fucking old. <laughs> Just like us. Oh my God. <laughs> Fire. Okay, we'll take a nap. The fire the missiles. <laughs> uh, I, I will now wow. speak. By the way, I will now speak this with a British accent, uh, a, a pompous British accent, because that is how I view him. Okay, so it is quite unprofessional to openly shit talk a property you've worked on in this industry. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Oh, so he knows. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, this reminds me of that line that like Mister Enter used to say in his videos. What I'm doing is wrong. What I know I'm doing is wrong. And I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> uh, Lenji cannot express any opinions as they have an official relationship with Sound Cadence Studios, Discotech, and Toei Animation. I, however, was a freelancing contractor and do not have any of those things. I am not speaking for Lenti anywhere in this post. Who can say what Lenti thinks? I am sure I don't know, except you did say that she kind of maybe hated Yeah, it. you fucking yeah. Also, <laughs> also, <laughs> motherfucker, your best friend. you said you wanted to do future dubs of other things. You wanted to actually look into that as a career path. So now you've just torpedoed it. I hope you're happy about it because you're shit talking <laughs> the thing you worked on. I, I want to say very quickly, stereotypical gamer. Uh, no, I don't think that was originally on Newgrounds. It was originally on Albino Black Sheep. There, now you're very old if you remember <laughs> that website. Oh, <laughs> I remember watching on Ebom's World. Albino Black Sheep is still technically online too, so <laughs> even better. <laughs> All right, uh, but I will tell you what I think, and I think that Levcom is a bad show about Riza Koizumi and actually an actual psychopath and all over useless freak. Damn. I have so much problems with that because, for one thing, oh, yeah. you are talking about a a character who is meant to be fifteen years old as a psychopath. All 15-year-olds are psychopaths, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else like, is new, asshole? Is, like, exaggeration is one thing, but oh my god, why do you have to call this character a psychopath? Why, uh, why, why Especially on when the you're freak. wrong. Like, like, when you consider the fact that the show is about her complex over being too large, her, for lack of a better term, her dysphoria, uh, and yeah. you're calling her a freak? Wow, yeah. dude. Holy fuck. Yeah, that's pretty insensitive. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. Sometimes when, when like, you, you have a character that isn't traditionally likable, I understand that it, it can be very difficult. Uh, like, there, it can be an, it can be an issue writing wise if you lay on their uh, unlikable aspects too thick for your audience to actually get into. But, what that is absolutely not the case with Risa in this show. Like no, I said, it's not. I, granted, I'm not a big, I'm not a super, you know, I'm not a super fan coming out the woodwork here. But I, I, I did the three episode rule herder. Um, but yeah, I watched <laughs> three episodes of this fucking thing. And what, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> And I watched, I watched 14 episodes, so I watched more than halfway through the anime. And I can say, I am genuinely a fan of this anime now. And I yeah, don't I know what the hell he's it. talking about when it comes to Risa being a psychopath. Like, the for the majority of it, she is just fawning over a guy she likes and then crying because he doesn't return her affections. And then, like, moping about it because she's a teenager. And it's like, yeah, that's what teenagers do. I, I would <laughs> love what? to see this man's reaction to Peach Girl. I think his brain would explode. Oh, my God. I, oh I my think God. he would rage so hard at Peach Girl. <laughs> like, if, if, if what I hear about Peach Girl is correct, this man would have a conniption. Oh, he, he would. He totally Totally would because Sai is literally best girl, but she is also worst girl. Like Raymond has said about yes. her multiple times, she like 
the things that they do in Peach Girl is like leagues and above anything that they've done so far in Lovely Complex. And I know that they took some some plot arcs out of the manga because they I don't think that they had the episode count. But comparing what I heard about the manga stuff that they took out for of Lovely Complex, that has nothing that has nothing on Peach Girl. Nothing at all. Like I don't there's there's nothing yeah, like that. It, no. Uh, also a rom com, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a rom com. Aren't those usually yeah. exaggerated for the sake of romantic comedy? Yeah. <laughs> it's ding, it's ding, an ding, enemies. Have a winner. <laughs> it is an enemies to lovers rom com where the ki- the main two leads are at each other's throats very very hard at the beginning of the series because they actively hate each other and the whole point of the anime is to watch how they fall in love. Wow, what a concept! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that has never happened before ever in the history of. Rom- that, oh. that never happened. How oh, could, get get, get ready. Such a thing? He's about to drop about things that also have never <laughs> happened in the history of romantic <laughs> Riza is go, an inconsistently go, written, go. awful character who does nothing but miscommunicate and cause problems. She is actively abusive towards Otani in the entire series. Every time she does something wrong, the narrative gaslights you by having the entire cast act like it's Otani's fault. She will then yell at him until he gives her a gift to make it up to her. I hate her terribly. This is a Riza Koizumi call-out post. I could go on for hours about the stupid things Riza g- says and does, but I think the best example is probably the following. After 2.5 years of poorly wooing Otani, they finally start dating. Almost immediately afterwards, her co-worker, a 14-year-old boy, tries to kiss her on the mouth while she's asleep. That's assault. Yeah, it Cinema is. Okay, this. okay. <laughs> but. <Yeah. laughs> I, 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 I understand he elaborates later, but I just want, to, because me and Twilight were discussing this last night, this particular phrasing is so mm-hmm. disgusting right. because like, if you only read this paragraph, as you understand English works, paragraphs are condensed thoughts. Like they're, they are complete thoughts yes. in and of themselves. This is a reason. Co- a, so reason says it does, but I, the best example is probably the following. This thing happens. She gets assaulted by someone, but somehow it's a problem for her. Yeah, it's it's her fault. Um, Risa yeah. is a bad person because she got assaulted, and she is a bad person um, with the way that she decided to deal with the person well, who assaulted her. I, I'm just arguing from the point of, of structure, the fact that yeah. he didn't immediately follow... like. The, yeah, like, anyone like, who looks at this and stops at that sentence will kind of look at it as like, okay, so are you victim blaming? Yeah, yeah, right you're now? victim blaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even even after That's... the elaboration, it's still victim blaming. Be- it yeah. Because here we go. <laughs> Otani sees this and assumes she's cheating on him, but the misunderstanding is quickly explained and all is well. So then, of course, Riza decides to go on a date with her assaulter out of pity. And then not tell her boyfriend about it. And then he discovers her doing this. So he breaks up with her. Obviously. For some reason, the next episode... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll go into that next episode. I, I yeah. love how he basically <laughs> treats Otani as though he is an innocent baby who has done nothing wrong. Yeah, when yeah. I've actually watched the show and I know that this motherfucker is so goddamn dense that he is thicker <laughs> than the mantle of the earth. Well, not even just that he's dense. He's also like, you know, br- uh, actually, this is kind of the source she, of why she uh, Risa directly and said to each other. Are, yeah, like they, uh, I know that th- this is part of why they like each other. It's because they're both pretty brash and a, li- a very immature and kind of think before they leap in a lot of ways. And they're kind of scrappy. They're 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 quippy. Yeah, shit. like they're she, people. she has directly told him. 
the one, the person who I am in love with is you, and has directly heard her best friend say, Otani, she loves you, and both times that he has heard that, he didn't believe them. <laughs> he thought that they were joking. Listen, it didn't, it took her crying and it. screaming at him hey have you ever considered that maybe i am telling you the truth and that the person that i love is you and even then it still took him a couple of minutes <laughs> listen poor self-esteem is a hell of a drug guys okay I'm, that's all i gotta say yeah like having rom-coms do a they break up kind of deal is so common and that's not that's far from being like i remember the worst one i saw was scrubs back in the day where the main dude finally starts dating the main girl he's been fawning over and then she's like i'm here and i'm all yours and he's like oh mg i don't want her anymore like literally in that same set like second of them beginning to date and i was like why <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> It's just uh, an excuse to drag out the plot because that's what you do with the story, like a rom com. You drag it out for drama. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dan. Yes. Um. Yeah. I. I was also gonna say at some point that yeah, part of the reason why he uh has these issues is because he did have a girlfriend that he had for two years. He was incredibly infatuated with her. She dumped him for a much taller guy. So he thought that the yes. reason why she dumped him was because she wasn't into him as a short man. So, like I said, this is what poor self-esteem does to a motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, these are all reasonable things. Like, yes, they are exaggerated for the comedy aspect as well for the drama aspect. It's it's a cartoon. Of course okay, it's going right, to be oh, exaggerated. Wait, wait, we, we got to be careful. We got to be careful about throwing that line around after <laughs> our criticisms of the movie. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> we, we, like, I get what you mean. It's, it's animation, so we, exaggeration is par for the course but we we gotta be careful with the c word <laughs> it, ha it has I mean, no, a it's a completely word. different context she was using that <laughs> word to dismiss a criticism uh i am using the word to describe the word itself that is completely <laughs> different cartoon is exaggeration okay well for some reason, the next episode, the entire cast turns to Otani and is like, Damn, dude, when are you going to forgive Risa? It's so fucking awful. Lovely Complex, episode 22, 2104-2022. Otani declares a catastrophic collapse. Risa gets assaulted and then goes on a date with her assaulter. Otani breaks up with her, understandably. See, he's he's doing the the Otani defense thing again. I just think that he has a bias. Oh, uh, oh. Like he he didn't say anything so far against uh against Otani. Like he so oh, far Otani, basically yeah. asks like acts like Otani has done nothing wrong. Like it doesn't. Like, dude, you said, and also, I I just love how he puts in the freaking Evangelion style like title card bullshit here. Like I see what you're well, doing. Well, no, this man. might. I I, I think it's actually this is an image excerpt from the script. I want to say. Yeah. I want to say this is how they like behind the scenes oh, they label things. Oh my god, new Dederek sorry. Yeah, I was just about to post that, that in the chat. Being plagued yeah, by the clanging. <laughs> you sound like an English whisper. What? 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 What is an English whisper? Oh wait, 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 wait. I, I think whisper might be a specific character, maybe. Uh, Jello hates women. Confirmed. Yes, confirmed. Um, yeah. I, so I haven't watched Epithet. Epithet erased. You're now, you're now learning why I can't pronounce the word. <laughs> So, but it stars a female character, kind of. I know it's like a girl and then a dude. From what I've seen, I've only seen the dude doing things, though. And then the girl's just kind of there. Am I wrong? Or... I don't know. <laughs> I haven't watched Epithet Erased either. Um, Me neither. <laughs> I have no interest in it. I, I never did. I, I really tried, and I just could not get into the pacing. And it was mostly the pacing, honestly. <laughs> English dub of Whisper from Yokai Watch. Oh, Mel oh. Claus. Yokai Watch. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. I know yeah. nothing about Yokai Watch. 
That He's was, your butler. It's really He's fun. great. <laughs> that was after my time. I always wanted to try and get into Yokai Watch, but then I just kept putting it off. And now we're here. <laughs> it's a monster collection show, right? Which... Yeah, that's why I'm into yeah, it. Yeah, I I'm say. into monster collection I, things. I, I, you, I, I might turn you on. There's um, there's an isekai manga I just finished reading up to current on. Uh, that's, I, I started reading it because it actually has a very similar starting premise to the Artificer. It's not one to one, but I was like, oh, he has like crafting powers and such, and like storage. Like his whole thing is he has an inventory. But what it actually kind of, like, I thought it was going to be more of a harem anime, and it kind of has elements of that, but it's actually turned more into a monster collection anime, uh, manga. Um, and he's got, like, he has a lot of, like, his main first one is a cute little kobold, he's like a little doggy, and he, like, learns to be a chef, and it's, uh, <laughs> it becomes more, uh, I, I'm more excited to see, like, oh, what new things is this dog going to cook? <laughs> As long as long as it has, as long as it's not anything like Cage of Eden, I I think I'll enjoy it. it it's it's very lighthearted. I'll, I'll get you a link to it. It's very I, Cage I of Eden saying, hurt me so bad. I will say, as a yokai watch fan, uh, the anime is real fucking weird. <laughs> so if you want to get into it, play the games yeah, uh, instead. Yeah, the I'll, I'll play the games. So weirdly um, sexually charged. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, uh, well, I'm assuming that it's a kid's show, so even though that it's sexually charged, it's not going to be as bad as Cage of Eden, which uh, in inserted as many panty shots as it could, regardless of the context of what was going oh, right. on in the scene. Oh, oh so a strike with There is a, there is a panel <laughs> where a guy is getting bitten in half by an Andrew Sarkis, and there is a panty shot of the main female lead right in front of it. I was going to say, like, uh, uh, I, I just, when you say, like, gratuitous panty shots, my mind goes, is it Strike Witches that I'm thinking of? It's like the magical girls who fly through the air on, like, it's not the battleship one, although the battleship one gets close to that. I, I just remember watching like one episode of it and being like, this is a lolly and like just her freaking panties like half the time or like a tight lead. I'm not. No, yeah, <laughs> no. Like I know there's, I know there's like subtext Yuri in there, but like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Also the, go the aesthetic it's is goofy. Yeah. Um, like Yuri is not worth it. I'm, I'm into Japanese. Uh, well, I'm into mythological creatures in general, but I do love Japanese mythology. I love dinosaurs and other extinct animals i love monsters like digimon and pokemon and all these other creatures from from different franchises i just love monsters in general so of course <laughs> monster collection genre is right up my alley Ah, <laughs> uh, all right so here we go the show has a myriad of other issues, too. The pacing is insane, for one thing. Episodes 1 through 6 and 19 through 24 are breakneck, with multiple plot lines being resolved in a single episode. But then the pacing slows to an absolute crawl between episodes 7 through 18, where quite literally nothing happens over the course of two years, to the point the characters themselves start complaining about it. Are you tired? of generic high school anime rom-coms having stock episodes like the Valentine's episode, the Summer Break episode, and the Festival episode? Well, how about having three of them each? I have so much issue with this line. Holy shit. It's, Can it's I go on up. like okay. a Okay, you know what? Perfect. I need to use the bathroom and get a drink. I'll be right back. You can just go off, Twilight. <laughs> the floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the first six episodes are do appear to be fast paced and that is because they aren't the point of the manga he is acting as though all of these things that they do in the first couple of episodes of the anime is supposed to be like in many other anime they are stretched out for so long and and they they are like the bulk of the show but no the the, the manga the anime isn't what that is focused on they 
she gets all that out of the way. The reason why they happen like that in the first place is to get them out of the enemies to lovers thing and into genuine friendship while still arguing with each other every day. It serves a purpose, it's like, it's but like that is I... not the focus of the show. The focus of the show isn't the isn't the whole um we're going to agree to um a bet with each other on who will gain a boyfriend or a girlfriend first and and whoever yeah. wins the bet is going to give the other something really expensive like that isn't the focus of it the focus of it was to get them out of the enemies aspect of their relationship and into an actual genuine friendship so that the main yeah, character could start falling in that. love with her love interest Right, which is a which is why a huge chunk of that already got dissuaded within the first freaking episode alone. This goes back to what I always fucking said in these streams about fucking Bumblebee is the importance of fucking emphasis. All right, in a slice of life show, this is a general rule of thumb. If it lasts for a couple episodes, and it was it, you know most of the time, most slice of life shows do this where they introduce certain conflicts that are contextually in the narrative themselves pretty small and petty compared to what the show is actually focusing on so that is supposed to signal to your brain that oh okay that's not the point of the show it's trying to go for something else that is what this show is doing in flying colors by the way yeah even if it wasn't doing it super well that's what it's trying to do and it's blatantly obvious so the fact that brandon <laughs> Jill's real name is going about this crap all wrong says a whole lot about how he understands any amount of media literacy whatsoever. And the, like, the parts that he considers to be boring is the bulk of the show. He like this is this is the stuff that Shoujo is made of, my dude. Like the whole uh the the fact the fact is that after episode six, you have a brief moment in time where Riza is trying to confess her love to Otani and then he rejects her because not everything automatically will end in a, oh, I just realized that I automatically love you too, even though that I've never shown genuine affection for you in that way. I guess I'm going to start dating you now. No, he he doesn't feel the same way as her so he rejects her and then those episodes are her dealing with her feelings of rejection and figuring out whether or not she's going to give up on him or still try and pursue him and try to show him that she could be good girlfriend material that is what he is saying is boring it, it actually leads into something Which that is... i've been thinking about a lot um, I saw it was a point of discussion talking about how we don't like we, we we tend to really fight against the concept of filler nowadays and we want like just plot. But you need filler because without it, your characters tend to feel like emptier because you don't have time for them to just breathe, to just be characters. You don't get those weird moments of little development. Yeah. And so this uh, this idea of, oh, all this middle stuff where just the meat of their characterization is happening, that's boring because the plot's not happening. Yeah. I think that's a bigger a, problem. A good that example to, in to the, some extent. The media sphere is working with. A good example <laughs> yeah. of this to some extent, even though I, you know, one of my favorite anime of all time, I adore it, Madoka Magica. It's all plot. The entire series mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's one of the most tightly written shows. But when you think about it, what do we know about the personalities of these characters outside of the stress situations they're being pushed into? Like, we get glimpses of it throughout the show at different points in time, but in reality, what we're seeing of them is them being put into these absolutely stressful situations about life or death decisions all the time. It's very rare when yep. these girls come together and hang out as friends. It's why for the beginning of Rebellion was so great for the fandom. Because we got mm -hmm. to see all the girls interacting mm -hmm. in a casual way and just relaxing and having a fun time. And like all their different personality quirks got to go on full blast. And we could have honestly done, like, if you really wanted to with Milk and Magica, you could have theoretically spaced out the anime into a 24 episode one and put filler arcs in there somewhere to kind of. Didn't I 
tell you that I think I would have enjoyed Madoka a lot more if we saw the first uh, the first timeline where she became a magical girl because of the cat. Right. Yes. You 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 were actually yeah. very angry about that when I told you that neat little tidbit. And then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then Twilight comes here and is like, "No, that's fucking stupid." And I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's not that I don't enjoy Madoka. Yeah. I do enjoy Madoka. But, like, I was pointing out all of these things that I thought were flaws of the show. And one of them is what we were talking about. And I think that that could have been solved if we got a little bit more context right. into the first universe, the first timeline that the characters had originally come from. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I yeah. do want to say... Um I think that there are different levels of of filler. There yeah. is filler that is absolutely yeah, devoid of anything, levels. and then there is filler that serves to add characterization to the characters, like filler. Right. For example, filler that that is absolutely devoid of anything of substance. I think is like genuine filler, and then filler that. Yeah. Is doesn't have plot in it, but does character work. I don't think that you can call genuine filler. Right, and like for example, I'm watching uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Five D's subbed uh, currently, um, nice. at the same time <laughs> as trying to catch up with this whole thing. And I'm watching it subbed. Yu-Gi-Oh! Five D season one subbed, probably best Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm saying this shit right now, and it's one of the <laughs> most tight. It's probably the most tightly written of any point in any of the Yu-Gi-Ohs that I have seen, then or since. Um, but that being said, as tightly written as it is, we get a lot of time, uh, especially with the characters interacting with one another, um, even after the first season, where we just see Yusei and Jack and Crow and the gang just hang out with each other, getting used to their new surroundings now that the main plot of the first season was just over and getting used to all of this stuff. And even before this point where we see the characters interacting, it, it's all just a really nice time, even though the characters kind of get flanderized a little bit, uh, most notably Jack, unfortunately. But it's mm. still good because we get it doesn't interfere with anything. It doesn't get in the way of anything. And it mostly adds to the characters as opposed to just taking it away. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> I was pretty baffled by this after we finished the series. Of, so, of course, I did a thing that I always do when I'm baffled by something being terrible. I go looking for an explanation. I skim through other adaptations of the story. I watch the live-action movie. Actually, the best love calm thing oh, no. out there, by the way. I looked at the sequel manga one-shots. And I looked at the original manga itself. It turns out there were quite a few storylines that didn't make it into the anime. So what was the deal? Was this one of those Full Metal Alchemist situations where the original anime comes out a little too early and they don't want to spoil the manga so they make their own ending? Nope! It turns out the story arcs they left out of the manga all fucking sucked! And frankly, I respect the Toei staff Don't for deciding you. to cut those. Like the arc where an adult woman is hired to seduce Otani, a teenage boy. Or the other arc where an adult woman tries to seduce Otani, a teenage boy. Or the two entire arcs and several prominent running gags about fucking transphobia. All right. First, um, I, okay, I, I want to just make say this shit because right he, fucking sure. now, really emphasize. I do not believe you. He really emphasized adults wooing teenage boys, like adult women wooing teenage boys. Guess what? That fucking happens. Yeah. That, yeah, that fucking happens. Have, happen. have you played Persona 5? Mm -hmm. well, where no, I, I, movie I, love I, interests can be your teacher or the random drunk lady in the bar? <laughs> I, I have a more real-world example of this, actually, because I watched a stream where people were talking about um, recruiting for college football teams and what a lot of like big yep. name football colleges do when they're recruiting these um, teenage boys, mind you, they're 17, 18 years old. Sometimes they're underaged. And you will sometimes get these girls mm -hmm. that are basically selected from the cheerleading team or, or some relative related cheer squad to effectively, they don't ever spell it out. They don't ever say it, but they take them, the boys off to parties. 
They take the boys off to bedrooms. It's like they do that because they want to recruit the best talent possible. And it's really fucking skeezy. It's a really big problem. Uh. But guess fucking what? It happens. So the idea of, oh, an adult woman was hired to seduce yeah. a teenage boy. That shit fucking happens. Not only that, but yeah, and the, let's, and let's not the talk itch, about Hollywood. Oh, the right. age of consent in Japan, in the Tokyo area specifically is 16. Um and like overall the entire country, this was only amended last year um to make the the overall age of consent of the country to be 16. Before that, the age of consent was 13 uh with some sort of Romeo and Juliet sort of law. Um, they, they've amended that now to be more in line with the rest of the world, but that, that lent to a lot of stories where it's more justified in their eyes as Japanese people, because, um, these, these kids are considered like sexually mature adults, not, not like full adults, but like adult enough to be able to make their own sexual decisions. In some cases. And even then, it, a guy, a career, and I'll co- go after. I, I, I was going to say, like, the point of, of his story arc is he is he thinks he doesn't live up to relationship status because of his height. But two different, yeah. like, story arcs are about women who do find him attractive despite his height. Do you not see how that would probably be a big deal towards making him realize that his height isn't as big a problem as he might think it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and I, and, also, I, and I'm willing to bet, I'm absolutely willing to bet that if we actually look through these arcs in the manga, because I don't trust this motherfucker for even a goddamn second. So, I could I could be wrong, I don't know. But I'm willing to bet that if we look through the manga and actually see this shit play out in action, I would probably assume that uh, that the story doesn't go through with it and that the point would probably be just a gag about how that's a bad idea. No, uh I I read okay. I read part of the wiki and one of the girls that tries to seduce Hitani is called like her occupation in the sidebar is said to be con artist. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's so, gonna do a real number on his on his self esteem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Also, going going with that, I also want to say I don't. Th- I you cannot say unless if there is like proof that Toei did this specifically because they thought that the plot was icky. I would not say that they that they cut that out specifically for that. I think that they had a specific budget and that budget meant that they only had a certain amount of episodes and so things that were not directly related to the direct main plot of the show had to be cut out. Therefore, it has nothing to do with any of that shit. It purely had to do with time constraints and what mattered to the plot. Uh, also, yeah. I think that that is much more likely. From JJ Base, pacing does not equal fil- uh, filler. Well, he may say filter, but I think he meant filler, and I, I agree with that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Um, do we now want to tackle the latter half of this? Uh, which oh, yeah. because I, I guess I guess we'll go into it because he's going to start elaborating on the fucking transphobia. Yeah. Perhaps the thing Lovely Complex is most infamous for is the character above, Seiko, who happens to be played by Oz in our dub. Seiko is a male-to-female trans girl who is introduced in a trans panic episode. It's not great. The original episode has a random extra out her, the rest of the cast making fun of Otani for kissing a boy, and gives Nobuko this extremely weird anti-trans radar that makes her dislike Seiko right off the bat. That's not true. He is a liar who lies. Hey, would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, yeah. yeah, in in Exhibit no a. in no part of the story in the manga or in either of the subs that I watched did Nobuko 
ever say anything like trans radar. He will say that he changed it to so that she is more jealous of her being so uh, fashion oriented. But that's what it was like in the manga. The manga says, oh, she's quite the fashionista, isn't she? How can you say that you changed it when it was already there from the beginning? Shut the fuck up. You are a liar. Also, what year did this anime yeah, come out? 2007. 2001. Oh, yeah. The, that's 2001, ourselves. Like, 2001 was when the manga came out. 2007 was when the anime came out. Okay. Like, like let's let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. Like, how many, like, right. just everything had a lot of, like, really homophobic, transphobic content in it all the time. Especially when you look back. Like, it's only, thankfully, it's happening, like, nowadays that this is not, a, like, we're not using these anymore. We're, we're being much more tolerant in the yeah. world. But 2001... Come on, of course, uh, you can look at any single yeah, movie yeah. ever, and there's probably going to be some sort of weird, like, homophobic or transphobic joke. There's whole movies dedicated to that. I, yeah. I, was, is it, exactly. uh, White Girls is, like, I mean, it's, it's about cross-dressing, but, like, yeah. it, that, that whole thing, <laughs> imagine there's, you can't tell me there's not one trans joke that goes by in that film. I love that. And um, honestly, the, the oh, anime... Yeah. The anime does treat Seiko very respectfully outside of Otani uh, not wanting to date her because she's trans. Uh, and also this character who is meant to be a fucking asshole in the first place. Like the girls, yes. when when Seiko reveals to the girls that because she directly says, I don't consider myself a boy. I was, God put me in the wrong body or gave me the wrong body parts, depending on which version of the subs that you watched. I watched, one of one of the subs says, uh, God put me in the wrong body. The other sub said, God put the wrong body parts on me. Um, she That was the thing that she directly said. So uh, because the girls were trying to be respectful because they thought that she was just a cross-dresser. So they're saying like, oh, um, we we want to be respectful of your actual name now that we know it. And she's like, no, no, my name is actually Seiko. So like that, after that, the girls had no problems with her. It was only two of the the like five or six boys that are in the show that had any sort of problem with her. And even then, Otani had no problem with her being trans. He just didn't want to date her. Because it wounded his pride, because people which, would still bully him for being feminine, effeminate. Which, all that stuff considered, this is pretty relatively progressive given the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. already, like, Brandon is on the wrong side of history right now. Compared and, to a show that was made in 2007. What the yeah. fuck? I mean, what and, the freaking uh, Fruits Basket has a. Um, well, a, a cross-dressing character at the very least. Yeah, a cross-dressing character. Like, and um, that's handled. Yeah. I mean, it's there is some mockery there at times, but it's all very character-based. And here, here's something that I I want to just get off my chest because I don't. I'm very open for for people to make jokes and 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 things and gags, whatever they want. I'm very free speech absolutist, and I understand that some people can take it very far and it hurts people's feelings. I, I understand that. I think if you write a story and it's all in character and it's it's reflected upon the characters how they handle certain things, what's yeah. the problem necessarily? Like I understand there is a thing about like what the viewpoint of the actual story is. Like there's there's a distinction between the actions of the characters and how the story handles those characters. And in a romantic comedy, 100%. characters talking about mistaken identity, <laughs> be it their actual person as in like say uh, um a comedy of errors for a good example where you got twins being mixed up all over the place uh or if it's just sexual identity with people who are like cross-dressing or transgender or transsexual or whatever it's a comedy it's supposed to be used for that like the, the, the mistake the, the misunderstanding is the joke it's it's the people trying to communicate and then missing that's where the comedy is i I feel like limiting ourselves is 
there's a there's a line to straddle between trying not to upset people, not trying not to hurt right. people's feelings, but also I think keeping the freedom open to explore lines of comedy that still work within given contexts. Yeah. Um, I I want to give the line that they changed in the dub cuz I I told you guys like she directly says in Japanese, mm-hmm. I don't consider myself a boy, God put me in the wrong body. This is what this is what they thought would be better in the dub. People haven't always seen me for who I am, but that hasn't stopped me from trying to live my truth. That's Does so that vague. Yeah. That's so that's so yeah. crappy and vague. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Like, like compared like compared to her, compared to her actually saying I am born in the wrong body. I don't consider myself a boy. How is that better? <laughs> yeah, if anything, they removed the aspect that makes this a much more powerful moment, at least from what you're telling me, and much more apparent in theme with like the trans experience. You're just removing that and making it more vague. If 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 without the, the context of this whole diatribe that he's doing here, from what you're telling me, if I heard that line, I would assume that this dude watered down the line to freaking uh, what was it? Uh, cater to transphobes who would be too uh, what was it? Uh, that would be too sensitive about this. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I I had a big problem about that because I said like I. If if I only watched the English dub, I wouldn't be able to tell whether or not Seiko is a crossdresser or if she is actually trans because they didn't make that clear. Yes. Whereas uh, in the Japanese, in the it does. Has a lot of that ambiguity. The Kaido Dan so. um, actually words this pretty well. The question should be: Does it punch down to the character in question, and that's their only purpose in the story? That's a pretty good barometer to go by. I think that's maybe not pretty completely much, yeah. catch all, but it's very close. Um, and I will, I will say that in, at in least so far, like this, I, I will say that so far in the story, because Seiko hasn't been like that prominent of a character, but. Um, as soon as she decided to partially give up on pursuing Otani as a love interest, she immediately went to supporting Risa. And the whole thing was, even though that she still likes Otani and she still hopes that Otani will like see her as a romantic interest, she still is fully supporting Risa. So she... Like I, I appreciate the the absolute conviction that all these characters have to just supporting each other in whatever their pursuits are. It's like late game sigh. <laughs> yeah, it is like late, late, game late, late, late game sigh. Late game sigh pops up. It's like, oh man, that feels good. It's kind of fucking weird, but it's good. <laughs> um, the original series keeps us going by doing a second and then third trans arc panic. Trans panic arc by pairing her with Kazuki, the guy who assaulted Risa. Yay! He then also breaks up with Seiko because he is disgusted that she is trans. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and I'm guessing I'm guessing the whole point that this pre-established asshole that you pre-establish as being an asshole is being an asshole. Also, what's the problem here? Like. <laughs> you phrase it as disgusted with trans. You, I, I'm sorry, man. I have to take you on bad faith in in this because what you've, what we've already seen comparatively. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if he was genuinely disgusted. If he was like Otani and only broke up with her because she was trans and said, "Hey, look, I'm not looking for that in a relationship. If I'm, I'm not looking for that in a partner." That's perfectly fine. If he was an asshole to her. Well, yes. we've already previously established he is an asshole, so this is completely within character. It doesn't make him a good dude, <laughs> but like oh, it uh, makes Haruka. Him a dick. Haruka is a different character oh. from from this character. This character hasn't actually been oh, introduced no in the anime yet. Um, he, I think, he starts because this is the second half of the arc of the anime where a bunch of different characters are going to be introduced, but he hasn't been introduced yet. Um, this character turtle deck just came to the live stream. Why do we have high class Celtic? Oh, because I am obviously the most superior writer in all of the land, and I know better than you all. Yes. <laughs> also, <laughs> I will. I will say that Dan is yes, right. Um, 
the Seiko Seiko is not used as a punching bag. Uh, she is used as a thing to punch Otani and make him look like a, a laughing stock. Yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with Seiko. It has everything to do with Otani. And yeah, from everything a lot she's of the driving co co comedic stuff. Uh, like yeah. the driving um, comedy of the show is joking about the characters' complexes and like their views on uh, relationship dynamics and shit. There's like, that's that's what's happening. There's a really emotional scene where um Seiko's brave face when some girls um, ask her, like, are are you actually a boy? And she says, yes. Are you dating Otani? And she, and you're not dating Otani. And she says, yes. And then they leave satisfied and laughing about the fact that she's trans. And at first, and that makes Risa like really upset because they also did the same thing to her as well. And so she's like wanting to go yeah. fight them, but Seiko stops her and says like, it's fine. But then she starts crying because like it did actually affect her as much as she wants to put on a brave face. And then she admits that she's afraid that Otani thinks that she's disgusting because she's, she's actually a male uh, who, who wants to be seen as a woman. And Otani like bops her up on the head and says, don't put words in my mouth. Uh, he, he, he directly says, like, he, because she wants to become a cheerleader. She wants to join the cheerleading club. He says, I, I will want to support you as a cute cheerleader. I just don't want to date you. That's all. So, like, that was, that was the end of their, their whole arc thing. Like, he, he directly said, like, I, I just don't want you to like come on to me because th th there's something that we haven't really talked about yet that I think is the part of the reason why he talked about the trans panic thing, but also why I talked earlier about the emphasis of characterization that I complained about them missing with the English dub is that Seiko is a very impulsive character. She acts before she thinks. She she kissed mm -hmm. Otani without warning. Um and then later on when he when he got hit with a ball and he he got sent to the nurse nurse's office, she started like undressing herself cuz she was going to get like hot and heavy with him. And that's when we uh see like yeah, she has a flat chest of a boy. Um like she's a very impulsive character, so I could also see like part of the reason why Otani is shocked about that is because like this this cute girl is undressing in front of him, and who knows if he would have rejected her if she was like a, a cis girl, but like it's it's the fact that she is way too um, open to doing all of uh, these yeah, things. Way too forward. It way yeah way too forward, that make that would make anyone uncomfortable really, and she admits right. that that is a character flaw of hers, and that people have to sometimes like you know stop her and like uh make her remember Rain that Rand that's not that. appropriate. Yeah. And and he's saying that he got rid of that entirely, so uh, erasing one of her character flaws. Uh, it's the same thing the li live action avatar thing is like yeah. everyone's grilling yes. that over. Yeah. <laughs> the the yes. the idea is like we're just going to take Aang's you know key character trait that he has to grow and develop out of and just shove it away because we need to actually accelerate the plot. And it's like no, the plot was that he was an impulsive what? child that needed to learn <laughs> to take fucking responsibility. Why did you miss that? It's like the that is like blatantly said in the show. That's like episode one. That's from episode <laughs> fucking one. How do you miss? Uh, how do you miss? <laughs> Teddy Bear Paladin says, "I feel sad that Jello's article may a likely may likely be the only way that a lot of other people other people may likely the only way a lot of people ever about this show when he's giving it such a raw deal." All right. Yeah, it that is does, very unfortunate uh, that he was like. I bet because I yeah. bet the people who like joined him onto their team was like, "Oh, Jell Apocalypse." 
this famous YouTuber. This will be great and help us with this passion project of us, yeah. like, redubbing this anime that we care about. And then here he comes, just shitting all over its reputation. Don't, don't because mention he shit didn't and Jello. Like it. Don't mention shit and Jello Apocalypse in the same... You're just gonna call <laughs> some really uncomfortable things I discovered. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, the uh, things that Raymond's told me. Uh, yeah, I, I did some digging on Jello, see if there's okay. any other controversies. Oh, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. But can I also just say that, like, it is unfortunate that because we probably would not have known about this show because of these circumstances. But if any of this is by any indication, I would implore anyone, I don't know about the rest of you, but I implore anybody to go out and experience the show for yourselves. It's actually pretty fucking decent. Like, it's a really fun show. The, I like the characters. I oh. think the uh, emotional conflicts with the main t duo is endearing. And I would, yeah, I definitely just recommend it in general. I, I, I want to finish it after this stream is over. I want to start watching this fucking thing. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, I do genuinely enjoy this show. God damn it, AAA. Oh, oh, guys, you're hitting the nail on the head. Stop it. Stop <laughs> discussing this. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> oh, you're, spo you're spoilers! Spoilers! No, you're fucking the content, guys. No. Um. <laughs> also, I was gonna ask. Haruka's the asshole, right? Yes, he okay. is the asshole. Interesting, you say that. In the anime, Haruka and Seiko are the best characters, and every time they show up, the episode gets better. In the original manga, Haruka has a running joke where he constantly uses a grabber arm to try and lift Seiko's skirt to expose her privates, which is a fucked up thing to do even when it isn't being done for transphobic reasons. This awful gag is alluded to in the anime's opening below, but thankfully does not make it into the show itself. Um, you know, you know what, you Jello? The Haruka, the manga? yeah, Haruka is a character that has a harem of girls that he dates in order to practice for when he dates the main character. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, Excalibur. No, I'm not telling you more Jello controversies. <laughs> I've already mentioned the go out and vote one. That one you can look up and go from there. All right. <laughs> I'm not telling you the rest. It's I trust me. It's not a rabbit hole that I particularly like. Uh, um, I'd like to give Marisa insane props for doing absolutely everything they could to handle this element of the production respectfully. The Seiko introductory episode is about Seiko's gender identity, so it's not like we could write it out entirely. But we changed a lot of things to take the edge off. Nobuko's Fine initial dislike would. of Seiko was changed from I don't know, I don't like her, my trans radar is going off, to being jealous there's another cute girl on campus and not wanting to lose out to a freshman. In the sub, Otani and Riza's end of episode reactions could generously be called confused but they got the spirit about the whole thing. We read out those to be a lot more supportive of Seiko, especially Otani's dialogue, which made it pretty clear he was still kind of disgusted by her. And Oz's performance as Seiko is so good that I cry every time we're watching it now. For good reason, even. So I take and it away. We already, we already established that he is a lying liar who lies, because all of that lies, was lies, in lies, the original yeah. manga. And he didn't change jack fucking shit about that. And like we already established before, he made he made Seiko's dialogue about her gender identity to be worse in the dub than in the sub. So if that was shut even the him. fuck up. If that was even technically him, because we have yeah. some interesting anecdotes uh, that will be coming up at the end of this. Yeah, but like uh, I'm I, I'm I talking about like the overall. The overall thing about him gushing about how good that episode was when that line was in that episode. And I'm saying that I think that it's really bad because it leads to a lot of ambiguity and it 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 just is not 
good as opposed to the just straight not beating around the bush that the the japanese version did Uh, also guys stop putting jello's pants on fire he might actually enjoy it anyway mm. (laughs) oh my wait what (laughs) let's see past the episode and its script by multiple trans sensitivity readers and not only made sure to cast a trans person Uh. as seiko but also to cast as many of the trans actors who auditioned for her as possible i don't have the exact number but i I think that Love Com Dub has something like 20 trans non binary actors in it. It's one of the li- transiest anime dubs in existence, if not the okay. transiest. Trans race. I, I fucking hate that not because funny, it sounds. It sounds so disrespectful to. Like. Okay, yeah. like. Just imagine this. Like, imagine if he was talking about autistic people. Like, we we oh cast so God. many autists in this. This is <laughs> the, the most autistic, autistic the, dub in existence. Autists, yeah, autistic, this is the most autistic yes. dub in existence. Like, fuck yes. off. Jesus, fuck. Oh. Like, that's, that's how it sounds. It's, Bro, it's so the, bad. That would it be is, insane. And th- this gets to the heart. This gets to the heart of the issue. If you find like, he's already right, let's put aside the fact that he's transparently wrong about his assertions about this show and that the changes he made are somehow better. Let us talk about the nature of transliterating, translating art into different languages. Because Japanese and English, surprise, surprise, are not the most compatible languages in the world. Like, they have a completely different sentence structure. They have a completely different interpretation of context. And that might sound weird, but allow me to elaborate. I could say the word... um, uh, Nomu. Nomi mono, which means to drink. Or which means drink. It's the, 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 I have a drink. Or do I, actually? Nomi mono. Depending on context, I'm saying, I have a drink. I want a drink. Twilight has a drink. There is a drink. Someone wants a drink. Context defines so much of the Japanese lingual experience. And it is one reason it is such a difficult language to learn. It's second to languages like Finnish and Chinese, but it is still really damned hard to learn because context plays a key role in understanding things. And to flip side it, Japanese uh, people have a very difficult time learning English because we're a little more specific in what we're talking about. So if I just if I just walk up and say drink, you're gonna stare at me and be like, "What?" I'm like, "I'm holding up pop can." I'm like, "I just say drink." Everyone would stare at me like I'm fucking crazy because no one knows what I'm trying to say. If I go, it's like, "Oh, I went to get a drink." You now know what I mean. If I say, "Here, I got you a drink," you know what I mean. Meanwhile, in Japan, it, it's it, they just have a different wiring to how their language works. So translating literally creates a lot of very, very rough patches. And I mean super rough patches. You need to understand the context of the scene and being able to actually translate it in a way that makes sense to, to English-speaking audiences is a very, very difficult skill to learn. Um, yep. So... It's understandable that when translating something from a Japanese property into an English property and vice versa, there's going to be need to take liberties. Um, A good example of this is changing some jokes. Like there was a joke in the Japanese that had a play on words because Japanese loves its puns about uh, the word Tamatama, right? Or was it Damadama? Tamatama. What did that mean Um, exactly? That meant... um... It it meant... uh... Oh gosh, uh, uh, the the whole scene about, in context was uh, she's she's talking about how something sucks because she her friend is saying, well, why don't you two date? And she's like, no, that that's not true. Uh, that that would suck. Um, and the the love in- Otani is saying uh, a girl shouldn't say that word. And she's she's saying, what? I didn't say anything uh, bad. It's not like I said testicles uh, yeah, is, so is one reading. The expression yeah. tamatama means happens to be the case. But the word tama 
is a slang's term for balls. Yeah. That does not translate very well into English. So English translators have to get very creative with how they portray that in a given work of the medium. Um, Twi the two dubs, the two subs that she watched, she gave me a screenshots of them. Which is one yeah. did it much more literally and just had basically an author's note at the top explaining the joke, which isn't very funny. And one actually no. tried to creatively integrate the joke into things, and it actually worked out. It wasn't perfect, but it was much smoother to the the the, the viewing experience, and it still conveyed the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I I tried to find yeah, it, but like this, my internet is like, not working at the moment. Uh, so I apologize for that. But if you could read out okay. the different translations and the actual dub for me, that would be great. Yep. yep. Please and thank um, you. Yeah, but like, think different things like this is part of why like there are some anime that will probably never get dubbed. Um, most notably the Monogatari series because that series dialogue and comedy is so unabashedly japanese that even trying to dilute trying to change it in a way that westerners would be able to understand just from like simple words the characters would say is a herculean task that i would not wish upon my worst enemy so yeah. they the i mean they they're kind of scattered exactly um yeah i'm sorry about yeah. that <laughs> so the, the one is like the guy responding to the girl saying a girl shouldn't say thing like balls balls and her immediate response is, I did not say balls. That's the literal translation of the joke. That is like the literal version of it that's the most realistic one, or the yeah. most accurate. But the more massaged one for an English audience is, like, it's her saying, just a coincidence, great balls of fire. And I think the guy says, a girl like you shouldn't be saying balls. And then she yells, it's an idiom. I didn't mean testicles. Which makes a lot more sense in English. Yeah. And and the joke is is that she's right. saying a vulgar thing right as the waitress is about to ask their order. Yeah. It's So she's being very vulgar uh when somebody who isn't in their friend group is like standing right behind her. Yep. It's it's absolutely so, and I do have the the English translation that they did for the dub there as well. Oh, right, right, right. Um, yeah. So what do they do in the dub? Um, Cause I remember it being. Sorry. Nuts. I, I, right. Um, it was so. It was such a blink and you'll miss it part. It was. It wasn't very like, funny. Yeah. That's from nuts. Like, the second you got episode. me there, but it's just uh, one thing. Um, which in parentheses they have in common with each other for context. And then the guy responds, "You probably shouldn't say nuts in mixed company." Company, and she yells back, "That's not what I meant." It actively undermines the funnier nature of the joke that she yells testicle or balls in front of someone that she shouldn't be saying that in front of. Consider, yeah. consider Japanese yeah. uh, social con social uh, uh, social norms dictate that you be very polite in front of people you don't know. Like if you want to be crass in front of friends, that's typically okay, but being rude in front of someone else. I mean, it's not really acceptable here in the States either, but like people can get away with it. Like it's just sort of, you're kind of looked down upon a little bit. Maybe it's just, it, it misses the complete element of the joke that she's being rude in public. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's also, why, Tetrovius, that's what I you're thought. You're absolutely right. Why? He, oh, go ahead. Sorry, that's God. that's what I was saying as a criticism of the dub that it ruined the joke by trying to um by trying to make it more literal in that sense instead of trying to preserve the actual nature of the joke which are the two different ways that you can translate the literal joke which won't translate into English or you can massage the joke to make it still work in English they didn't do the better part of that. It, well, I think actually well, so part of it is they, they just removed the Why does he talk about reason. trans people's identities like they're a marketing tool? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. come on, <laughs> Dutterex. Come on. What? Oh, oh, new Dedarex oh. art, and it just makes me sad. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if I'll show oh, that no. one on screen. Oh <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, all right. Here we go. 
In addition to Oz Ryan in his first anime role ever as Seiko, this was recorded before Sasura in Kageki Shoujo, which is an incredible performance that I absolutely recommend you watch, by the way. This is also the first anime that Tom... Ar Aramanes? Laughlin showed up in. It also featured fan favorite Gianni Ma uh, Matra Matragrano. <laughs> Gianni Matragano, I don't know, as the gross teacher, <laughs> oh Mr. Matey. Nope. Yes, there's an arc about Risa falling in love with him. Yes, it's awful. It's not like... Oh, that was the episode that don't I was about you. to watch before the stream started. It, it, he was going to appear in that episode. It, it's not as if girls falling in love with their teachers is a common trope, even in American storytelling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty Little Liars. So really lie. famous this example. Like it sounds like it, I I mentioned I said he sounds like Cinema Sins earlier, and it's this exact kind of thing that I just hate. This like finding umbrage with every single detail, regardless of context and like concept. <laughs> yeah, like you're not even like you're not even explaining why it's bad. You're just fucking moralizing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For anyone that's interested, we are currently reading through The Ables by Jeremy Scott of CinemaSins fame in the Tundra, which you can join for $1 or more to my Patreon. Uh, <laughs> you can join us every Friday night as we read through that god-awful book. Admittedly, it Damn. gets boring sometimes, but it sometimes it gets really fucking stupid, which is hilarious. Yep. <laughs> Like, like the characters being sent to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably one of the few intentional jokes that actually work in that book. Yes. Actually, that is a question. I wonder if it is a joke or if it's not. I, I gotta wonder. Um, what is his opinion of Cleveland? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any, anyway, yeah, it's... I, I, I just have so many problems with everything, like almost every single line that this man has said in this text. And just, it makes me so mad now that I actually have context, having watched at least half of the anime. It is just like, it just seems like he's just pulling things out of his ass. I... I'd say he only, I, I don't, I, I say he like only watched the anime once me. and didn't understand it. But you watched yeah. the anime once and you completely yeah. understood it. Yeah, I, I just don't yeah. know. Like, there there can be so many different interpretations of this. Like, either he uh, doesn't care about shoujo, uh, doesn't like anime in general, um, he's being disingenuous, or tinfoil hat, this is all a big ploy uh, in order to get people riled up so that they have attention on this dub. And he took the or, hit for that. Or... Ooh. Or even even further tinfoil hat layer, this is a, is a, he is actually an anti localizer psyop, and he's doing this to make intentionally to make him look bad. <laughs> I mean, um, my my tinfoil hat. I think he thought he would post this, and everyone would be like, "Wow, Cello, you're so cool. You have all the best opinions. So we will so have fun. you localize." all of our things for the rest of time because you clearly know what's best and this was going to be his like like gateway into the into mainstream yeah. <laughs> uh and Wait, disco tech is, is working tinfoil? on <laughs> that's a very good tinfoil hat like how do you get it to like stay that way um it's magic <laughs> But magic doesn't work on tinfoil. That's why you wear it. Uh, Excalibur says, J-Lo must be the reverse Flash if he's this much of a hater. Look, no, no. I, no, 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 no. I will Accurate. not have Tom Cavanaugh anywhere near J-Lo of Apocalypse, all right? Like, fucking Tom Cavanaugh does not deserve that. That man is a A-class actor, all right? Also, a cockalypse. Oh <laughs> that was completely so accidental, but it too, worked. was brilliant. <laughs> I, I can tell you were hoping to just like coast right through and no one would notice, but we're assholes. We noticed. We pointed it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick with, we'll with Jello Acocalypse from here on out. I think we're, I think we're all good with that. 
<laughs> Despite everything about the original incarnation of this anime, this dub turned out just so funny. <laughs> we really funneled our frustrations into comedy and wrote a lot of good jokes while also improving as much of the relationship between the leads as possible. There are lots of scenes where Risa yells at Otani and a lot of scenes where Otani reacts to Risa by inappropriately laughing at her. Many of you probably already know this about me, but I am a romantic and love writing actual good romance, TM, because nobody else on earth seems to know how to do it. Improving the relationship between the leads of Lovecom took surgical precision, and I still wouldn't call it a healthy relationship, but I did my absolute best to make sure Riza and Otani had enough positive characteristics that them falling for each other made some kind of sense. I think we especially improved Otani. He starts kind of annoying, but by the end of the series, I think I would call him genuinely pretty cute. Riza's unsalvageable, hey, though. Brandon? Okay, Brandon, I'm, I'm gonna need you to... I, I'm gonna... Okay. What I'm gonna <laughs> need you to do is that I want you to slowly and carefully pull your head out of your fucking cock that you're sucking yourself And put on. a cactus up in there. <laughs> oh, God damn <laughs> I, I, I was going to go say, you know, just go into Minecraft for me, my dude. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll be in there shortly to meet you. <laughs> How is he a romantic? Every single video he's that I've watched of his, he's bitched about the romance in every single one. Well, that's what every he's saying. He, does, he says that none <laughs> yeah. of them are good, but he knows how to do it best. I yeah, he's he's saying yeah. I know better than uh than every other romance writer that has ever written a romance. I am the only one who knows how to write a romance properly. I am the only one who can do romance properly. Like fuck oh, off. Eat my ass. <laughs> eat my ass, dude. Wateru Wateri would fucking destroy you in two goddamn chapters. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dog? Oh Are my we... god. This I, man I, I legitimately would just die with Peach Girl. I legitimately think. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Metal Dude, Club. Imagine, Bets, see, Bets was that some sort of joke? Imagine him, imagine him watching Kaguya Summer. Oh god. Bets, <laughs> was that some kind of joke or is he that egotistical? I think he's that egotistical. Um, That's yes. crazy. He got he, too big too fast. <laughs> yeah, he legitimately said that in the text, and that is absolutely disgusting to me. It, it's because, yeah. well, like, know. it's one, it's one thing to say that and then like write fanfic, do your own thing. It is a completely other thing to say that while you're also dealing with the work in question and you are changing the yes. original work itself. Like that is absolutely deplorable. Like here, let's let's be real. His career is not very fabulous. He had a kind of yeah. failed, like web cartoon that didn't really get to go anywhere. He's voiced like right. one or he's two in, characters in some in anime, and and now he started yeah. this and he burned this to the ground before. It. Like he's not gotten anywhere. He's just internet famous and not even mm -hmm. like peak yeah. internet fame <laughs> he's yeah he's I, a failed abridger like he he's one of the few like there are very few abridgers on on youtube right now that are still trucking it and still get like a shit ton of clout you know tfs obviously being the biggest one for obvious reasons but like but they're not all the other ones anymore. like him or yeah like all, all the rest are just washed up <laughs> Like, the only one that I think of that's actually going forward is the one that's doing um, Sword, Art Online, uh, Sword Art Online Abridged, um, SAO. Yeah, and also and also Joyride uh, Productions, who are making a huge freaking uh, abridged cinematic universe, mostly centered around MHA. <laughs> but the... What I was going to say with, like, the actually good romance... Dude... Romance is fucking messy. Like your 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 mm -hmm. your your big focus is like calling it a healthy yeah. relationship. Like, but that's not what we're here to watch. 
Which is already a trap. Yeah. It, it's We're not here to watch a healthy romance. We're here to watch enemies to lovers uh, be- go through their arc into becoming actual lovers. Enemies to lovers. Do you think that inherently means that that is going to be a smooth transition? Like, our, <laughs> our big complaint when it comes to Bumblebee no, is the baby. fact that it's portrayed as a healthy relationship yeah. when, in fact, it should not be by any measure. When it's absolutely not. That is yeah. our big complaint with it. It's not that it's no. necessarily... It's not a good romance. I mean, it's a bad romance because it's it's intent well, and its execution well. is bad. <laughs> like, that's what we're getting at. That's the disconnect. There you but go. But if you write an intentionally dysfunctional romance, and maybe along the way the characters slowly get more and more healthy, there's something to be said there. Again, I eat. Peach Girl, good example. Yeah. Um, Rebecca yeah, Seven, really good. good, good example. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy has anyone shit. ever? Holland is the anyone... most toxic motherfucker on the planet. He is. He really is. <laughs> has anyone I ever read the manga called Orange? Has anyone read that, or is it no. just me? Is it related to Citrus? Heard of it. Uh, no. Damn. <laughs> no. It's a rom com. <laughs> and it's like, and it's, their relationship is all over the place because she's a shy mess, basically. The, the, the gist is he's depressed and she's shy. And, like, I cried my eyes out reading the last two chapters. And because I cared so much. And I wouldn't have gotten that level of care if their relationship was an, a simple, easy little one that all oh, humdy dum, they just perfectly matched together that's not what drama right. and good storytelling is built on conflict builds character that's why we watch these shows yeah, yeah. and like yeah as there's, long it's as not the to say are believable given who the characters are then like yeah there's no issue with it. like yeah some conflict can be needlessly artificial right obviously but yeah. as long as that isn't but this dude is wrong in saying that that is the case here when it absolutely is natural and that's not to say that romance stories can't have a mostly smooth transition um snow white with the red hair is a really good example of a fast burn romance yes. where the characters really get together good. in like the fourth episode of the anime and the whole uh the whole premise of the show is them dealing with the power dynamic that they have while still trying to maintain their romance because the the main lead love interest is the prince and the main the main character is just a commoner who um works for the castle eventually but she doesn't start out that way like he helped her get that position uh or at least he helped open the door so that she could work hard to get that position um and the the main struggle isn't necessarily their relationship in and of itself, but it's the the things surrounding their lives that make it hard for them to be together in certain aspects. But that that is the conflict. The conflict is what makes the story. Uh, Nesbit twenty two. Yes, I did read Citrus. I do. I have not read Citrus Plus. Um, but yeah, I I have read Citrus. I, actually, I was going to do a video on Citrus where uh, I was going to compare the anime and the manga, because I think there are places where the anime actually really succeeds. Like, um, people don't give it enough credit. In the manga, it's not very clear that, like, the opening kiss between the two characters in the very first chapter is sexual assault. Like, it is, but it's not, like, exactly clear what's going on there. In the anime, it is absolutely clear that it is fucking sexual assault. And I was going to use it as a great case study in it, in examining how animation adds an extra dimension to things. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone's who, who brought up the artificer? Why are you oh. Sparty? Why are you bringing up the artificer? Oh, uh, <laughs> Michaelis ladybug romance complicated. Also and- Nesbit. I agree. Chivalry of a failed knight has a great romance subplot. There's a 100%. lot of great romance subplots this out guy there. Knows what's up. And just to kind of yeah. finish my, my thought on this before we move on is, Romance is inherently a just a complicated thing. It, it, between even the healthiest of couples, it gets very, very complicated in just some of the simplest things. There are times where you end up hating your partner because yeah. that's just like it, it, you have such extreme feelings for them that when something doesn't go right, it 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 starts to pull you guys apart. It it, it it's that severe of like a swing. 
It can happen to anyone and everyone. And that's why it's very important to actually show dysfunctional romances because people getting through the dysfunction in their romances in a healthy way can be a great learning experience. Or showcasing a, a dysfunctional romance breaking apart is important to know for what the red flags are. That's It's very helpful in many different ways. And it just feels like the more I read about Jello Apocalypse, the more I feel like this man has zero experience on the romantic front. Honestly, yeah. I mean, whether or not he he actually has a lot of experience with romance, honestly, doesn't mean that it translates. Um, and this is this is also I was gonna say this a lot earlier when we were talking about um, like them getting a sensitivity reader and stuff like that. This is actually why I'm kind of against sensitivity readers. Because just because somebody is a certain demographic doesn't mean that they know how to write it. Um, there is a book out there that got really popular last year called Fourth Wing. And that is a, a woman who has a disability where her joints are very weak and she gets injured very easily writing a character who is also like that. But she wrote it so poorly that there was a lot of discussion going around about representation and proper representation and uh, whether or not this story was good representation just because the author also had that disability. And most people came to the conclusion that no, just because you are an author with a certain disability or a certain uh, different aspect and you're writing a character like that doesn't mean that you know how to portray it well. So these characters are 16, right? 15, 16, something like that? Um, Around 15. Fif 15 to yeah. 17, yeah. So, like, that's the time, like, you're gonna have weird, random, emotionally charged romances when you're 15 to 17. <laughs> I can tell you, none of my romances yeah. when I was that age were healthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Me, me being here like, oh, you guys had romances as a teenager? I got a guy... <laughs> I got a guy who who paid a friend a dollar to ask me out for him. Oh. oh. oh <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, I didn't say yes. <laughs> and then I got a guy who had never talked to me before giving me um, like a two page love letter on Valentine's Day talking about how he admired me in the library a lot. And then when I talked to my friend, they're like, oh, yeah, he gives everybody that kind of letter. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> what a creep! <laughs> what an yeah. actual I... loser! <laughs> yeah, it's like wait, I don't even go to the library. I... What the fuck? <laughs> no, that's that's where that's where my anime friends hung out was the library. Okay. <clears throat> Fun fact! We canonically wrote and directed Risa as a psychopath who doesn't understand empathy and Otani being in a cycle of abuse without realizing it because that's the only way their highly inconsistent actions make any kind of sense. At one no. point, Otani literally tells Risa he, quote, bought a gift for her in preparation for the next time she got mad at him, which is what resolves their current tiff that's drama response. And it's in the sub. Uh-oh, sisters. Your thoughts? Okay, can I just say, now I, won't, now I will not say that I, I've gotten as far as to the specific point that this dude is talking about here. But after watching the first three episodes, both subbed and dubbed, where's the freaking psycho bitch energy coming from? Yeah. I never got that. Like, is it is it when they're basically new adults? Because from what I from what I understand of the story going forward, they're going to graduate and go into their first year as like actual adults, either going to college or getting jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they're still going to be like technically teenagers. They're going to be like 19, maybe maybe might be pushing 20 by the end of the story or whatever. But like what? <laughs> It kind of just sounds like Cello doesn't like it when women show emotions. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like he, he's putting well. so much focus on Risa and and saying like, oh, she she has an abusive relationship with Otani, and Otani is like the poor little victim to her. And it's like, 
uh, like I said, the the whole comedy comes from the fact that yes, to a certain degree, they are a little bit of assholes. Otani is also an asshole to a certain degree. He yeah. um he ab- abuses um Risa just as much as she abuses him. Like they start out call he calls her like she calls him like short stack and and all these kinds of like um I think she took this this uh insult from Haruka cuz she called him a water flea and she started calling him that too for a little while. Um but she he calls her giantess and like beanstalk and all these any kind of an height Amazon joke that you yeah stuff. an Amazon <laughs> anything that you can think of under the sun they have called each other that when it's related to their height that's that is their dynamic everybody thinks that it's funny because they're so in sync they are they share the same brain cell they are two peas in a pod and that is why everyone thinks that they should just actually get together and that is why he says like oh this is this is her being abusive to him because everybody is supporting her and nobody's supporting him and it's like yeah because he's the only one going against the grain here uh risa has figured out that she has feelings for Otani. Otani still has not because, like I said, he is such a dense motherfucker. He is a layer. He is the layer of the Earth's mantle. That is how thick he. That's that's how thick he is. Uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, newbie YT, uh, newbie Y two channel, well, YouTube channel, I guess. Uh, just reminded me, SAO bridge Kirito X Asuna goes hard. Yes, it does. It's one of the best dysfunctional yeah, romances in fucking anything. Because they're both absolute psychopaths. Yeah. But they function well together. I genuinely care about their relationship. It's wonderful to see those two complete and utter monsters get together and try to raise a, do- a child. It's... <laughs> oh, God. And if you guys Bre- want yeah, a really good dysfunctional great. relationship... And Brendan's trying to... Think... Oh, that dude. one is it. That yeah. one is it. Sorry, I, I just wanted to like, remind you. But yeah, right. Brandon... Uh, what was the functional, dysfunctional relationship? Uh, the relationship of uh, Kirito and Asuna and sort of oh. align on bridge. Okay, okay. Uh, I thought you were yeah. going to say a different one. I didn't think that you meant like in relation to SAO. Yeah, no, sorry. I, I didn't mean the trail off there. Yeah, that was just... <laughs> okay, I was just saying that like, um, yeah, not only is that a good example, but also it feels like Brandon is trying just... He's jerking himself off in too many, in so many different ways, dude. It's disgusting. But anyways, he's doing it in a way where he thinks that's what he did with Risa and Otani in this show, when that absolutely is not the case. All right, I know, I know, we're cucking the content a little, but there's a chance that a majority of whatever his suggestions or changes were never even made it to the final product. Again, we'll, I saw we'll, both we'll get all to the that. all three of the first three episodes subbed and dubbed. None of that shit was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um also I I just want to say like how how is how is a girl that has um body image issues a psychopath when the only thing that she does is she slowly comes to realize that she is now friends with this guy and that very quickly that friendship has turned into romance and she is um fretting over it because she doesn't know and doesn't think that the guy feels the same way and then her fears are confirmed when he directly rejects her and then she's very sad about it how how is any of that psychopathic um, yeah. <laughs> and, and even going, even going back yeah. and saying like, I'm scared that our relationship is going to change now that he knows that I am in love with him. I, I want to tell him to just forget everything that I said. I want to go back to normal and have a normal relationship with him again, because what we have together is so special to me. I don't want that to change. Well, that's bad because she's a woman. <laughs> I <guess> so. <laughs> uh someone clipped that anyway um <laughs> frankly what? having the dub You're come out play. this good oh wait no sorry guys we're getting to one of the nuclear takes in this oh frankly dear. having the dub come out this good in the end is a little frustrating anyone who watched this show as a kid and has fond memories of it and revisits the dub will think wow it's just as good as i remembered no it isn't we made it good! 
This show sucked! The amount what of rough this? edges we shaved off the entire... Uh, our, uh, the amount of rough edges we shaved off this are entirely invisible! Unless you buy the Blu-ray, turn on the dub, while also keeping the Japanese subtitles on, which allows you to listen to our edits in real time! And then he plugs it. I, this, so... is, this is actually this fuels your supposition that he's this doing is, this as a. As a this a... is scummy, dude. <laughs> well, no, I, yeah, I'm so wondering if he's doing. Yeah, I think Twilight might be onto something with he's doing this as a self sabotage to try and sell more yeah. copies. I, I think so. Yeah. It's and so weird. Why would that I can't do imagine anyone. He did this for free. I can't imagine anyone doing like a sound mind. Taking a product they just worked on and just completely just burning it like this. It's so weird. <laughs> How did he think this was a good hey, idea? Dude, I got... I feel bad, whether or not his change is made, and I feel bad for the people who, who actually liked the dub of this show and got exposed to this show because of the dub, who have to see this and, and actually just see this guy, like poisoning this shit with, with just his self-aggrandizing asshole behavior like this is insanity mm -hmm. why in the yeah. world would you do this to your viewers why are you blatantly showboating in front of them and saying that like and you're giving yourself all the credit in the world here this is insane yeah mm. it's Critter, so you're assuming he has a sound mind <laughs> no, that was that was that was the you point know, of her, her comment. <laughs> yeah, just uh it it frustrates me so much. I I cannot understand the logic of this man. I don't know what kind of delusional fantasy world he is living in to to say things like this. Like this is absolute insanity. Just also ins insulting too because it's like oh you liked it before actually you didn't i made it as good as it can be if you did like the original sub you were wrong because i made it as good as so it can be this is this yeah. is yeah, very clearly kind of how it's like the same kind of it's it, the same kind of gross as when like that one time tara strong was all like hey guys i made your childhood it's like okay lady yeah. <laughs> if, if i may Not take mine. a minute here to be narcissistic a little bit this is how the people in the ruby fandom view me by the way <laughs> yeah. even though i have no actual bearing on the on the actual plot of ruby they somehow view me as if i'm some defiler of 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 ruby like that i'm somehow being this a asshole, heretic. like just because I consider my writing better doesn't mean that I'm a perfect and that I made somehow the best thing ever made under the sun. But I also completely recognize the legitimacy of the original work. I I am I am not in any way trying to shit on Ruby. I'm I want to see it do better, but I love the show. I genuinely like the show. Um. So it's like. Meanwhile, here, this guy just fucking hates this thing and completely free for the like. Yeah. I, I won't say the wrong reasons because ev you know everyone's valid in their own opinion. I would just say your opinion is wrong. You, you, you are you are factually incorrect on several of your points, and thus your opinion is wrong. <laughs> Yeah, like some some people would say, like hypothetically, I'm not saying that anyone has genuinely said this or not. I don't know. The Ruby fandom is really, I I don't I don't know. They they are filled with some weird people. But like <laughs> some someone were to hypothetically say like Ruby caused a genocide, and I would look at them and I'm like, what the fuck are you smoking? <laughs> yeah, like I I push back yeah, on Ruby I, I critics from time to time. Not, maybe not as much as I probably should. I, I, it would be interesting to kind of try and pull up the most well-accepted critiques of Ruby that are, I would think, wrong in some way. That'd be interesting to explore. Pushing back on... on uh... Just pull up Batman's video. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Batman's usually pretty accurate, though he does get wrong about some things. Uh... Yeah. Anyway. No, I'm just um... saying, for the sake of the joke, but yeah. All right. <clears throat> the double cast genuinely deserves a lot of praise for this. Amber and Howard really elevated Risa and Otani. Risa is so unlikable that Amber's natural comedic timing is necessary to make her into something watchable. 
Howard's performance completely blows the original Japanese seiyus out of the water. Oh, okay, I did not know about that quote. That is a, oh. that is a bold motherfucking claim from someone that doesn't yeah, speak the goddamn dude. language. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. What the oh, it fuck, gets dude? Worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Uh, keep reading then. Keep reading. I don't normally explicitly dunk on an acting performance, but Otani's sub actor just sucks. Plain and simple. Seriously, one of the most snot nosed performances I've ever heard. You can't help but wonder why so many girls are interested in him. And the VA has practically no other acting credits either, so it's not much of a surprise. Holy fuck. Me. What a scummy Holy thing. fuck. What? What a scumbag you are. You Jello, you're a YouTube voice actor. What do you mean? <laughs> Congratulations. Jello, you're Your height of fame was voicing a fucking cartoon raccoon. And yes, <laughs> I'm using a derogatory cartoon in this instance because not though no, Ruby doesn't deserve it. You deserve it. You fucking deserve it. You deserve <laughs> the derogatory also... use of cartoon, motherfucker. If you're going to yeah, because you're like not critique real. If you're going to critique someone's no voice acting person. performance, you can't just be like, oh, it's snot nose. That, what do you mean? Like, what about the performance is it do you not like? Is it, yeah. is it weirdly nasally? Is it somehow Rich. irritating and annoying in some ways? Why is, is it like he's like, like, does he end on a high note every single time he finishes a sentence? Like, what does he do that's so, so bad? To is it emotionless it's or, or what? Things. Well, but no, if it's he just any of I, those things. He's fucking lying because the voice acting is pretty fucking decent. Granted, I'm no expert either, but like, it, this is stupid. He just wants everybody to just take him at his word, and what, and like his sources is that I made it the fuck up. What's nice yeah, about he's a, he's a lying liar who fucking lies. What's nice about <laughs> me and Twilight? We both know at least some Japanese. We're both learning yeah. Japanese actively. And to that extent, it helps us understand some of things being said in in, uh, in anime. So we understand when there's a good performance or a weak performance going on. That's why I can confidently say, if you watch the Japanese version of the original version of Ruby Ice Queendom, a lot of the performances are really lackluster, especially from previous voice actors that I really respect. Weiss's voice actor, for example, voices Diana Cavendish in, in Little Witch Academia. One of the roles I absolutely love her for, because it's not a it's not the most complex character in the world, but she has this depth to her, this this different mix of emotions every time she speaks. And then you get to Weiss, who is an even more complicated character than Diana. And she sounds kind of bored half the time. It's really underwhelming. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, like who's directing them? Because sometimes good is. actors can have bad performances if they are directionless and they don't yes. really know what they're supposed to be doing. Hi, Michael B. Jordan and Genlock. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone in Genlock. How's it going? <laughs> I'm about to say, isn't everybody? Well, except for Kazu. Kazu was, you know, perfect. It's just the show's story ruined him. And to be fair, I thought Cammy was all right with her voice acting. Character is different, but voice acting, I thought that was too. Good. Yeah, the character wasn't all that great, which is a shame because Cammy was actually the the one character that I did like for the most part. And then season but, two, yeah, yeah, and then season two happened. Oh, to be fair, season one wasn't Oof. exactly great with her either. Well, yeah, um, well, I, you only, I you like only put, watch season yeah. one. I watch both seasons. I, I, I had to suffer. I just can't get over the stupidity of someone being like, oh, I'm no good with bipedal legs. Give me leopardine legs. Like, give me fucking rabbit legs for my robot because somehow that works better for me. Fucking yeah. how? You use your regular legs every single day, bitch. <laughs> Dude, they're trying to do this like oh i'm i'm an other kin i'm actually an anthropomorphic rabbit and it's like no g shut up <laughs> like that's, i can't translate to your robot like that, that that's would, not how that works cool. you have been cool if they experimented with that in the other direction is like oh i think this would actually improve my performance but now i got to get used to these new legs that would yeah. be actually be interesting to explore because it's something that she wants. It's something that could potentially be effective and change up their battle tactics, which you, you want against an enemy that's like uniform 
you want kind of a an odd we want a wild card nature but like and the idea is like okay our human brain isn't built for this and like she suddenly has to contend with the fact that what she wants is going to take a lot of learning anyway yeah whatever Jen Locke why are we talking about it no one likes it um <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about bad performances versus good performances that's how we got here Arim and Oz do an incredible job as you can see in the above clips and Alejandro Saab Heki, uh, Hekichi uh, Sarah Viden, uh, Videnheft Chiharu and Aaron Desmuk Ryo, uh, Aaron Desmuk <laughs> Your mortal enemy. He's so good. Oh. Like, he he is legitimately a good actor. I just I really don't like yeah, Oscar. Yeah. It, it sucks because I love Aaron. I love Aaron as freaking um Al, uh, 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 Al in uh, Full Metal Alchemist. It he he is the definitive right. Al for me. Just damn it, man! 100%. Don't 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 get paid by Rooster Teeth. Um, I, but he did so good with Oscar. I was you're, you're, impressed in Volume Eight when he's like captured by the yeah, Hound, and that. then Salem is like trying to talk. She's like, "I want to talk to Ozpin," and then you can tell that it's Oscar trying to sound like Ozpin. That's impressive to oh. to act like you're acting like you're acting like someone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's what was Great impressive shit. about um, Deathly Hollows Part Two was where you had. Uh, who is it that played Beatrix, uh, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange? Um, Helena Bona Carter. So you had Helena Bona Carter playing Hermione, trying to be Helena Bona Carter, like in the Polyjuice potion, like right. that, <laughs> which that insane level of like back and forth, like is three layers of character acting, which is just, I, I for all your thoughts, whatever they might be on the Harry Potter films, there's some good acting in there. <laughs> also, I, I do want to say quickly, because Kaido was talking about um, a certain voice actor who played o Otani in Japanese. He only played that character in the drama CD. He didn't play him in the actual anime. It was a different actor. Oh, so he's wrong about that. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, um, Jello is correct, I think. Oh. Um, his his voice actor in the anime is Akira Nagata, and in the drama CD, it's Takahiro Sakurai. And the one in the anime didn't really have a career beyond that? I don't know. I haven't quite looked him up. Uh, he has... Um, he has a movie, Route 58. He has two anime under his name. He has three TV dramas, and he has four stage plays. Two of them, which are Macbeth, and two of them are Run and Gun. Oh, damn. <laughs> Interesting. I would love to see Japanese Macbeth. That has to be wild. Yeah. And I don't even like Macbeth. It's like yeah. the one tragedy of uh, Shakespeare's that I don't like. Um, I wonder if they did o um, Othello. <laughs> I want to see how they did that. Macduff was from his mother's womb, untimely ripped. Is the is the character Macbeth? Because it says musical air gear. Wait, air gear? Is that, what? Is that what? what? I'm fucking? No, I'm thinking air mask. Like the anime air gear? Yes. No, no, air gear is a different anime. Like the one that would be yeah. freaking rollerblades and shit. Air gear. Yeah. Macbeth made this whole stream just a Macbeth stream. <laughs> Shakespeare stream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's a character in... With Macbeth. It, it is a character in... I guess an air gear... Yeah, it's it's definitely an air gear character from, like, a yeah. play. So this, this person okay. is more of a live-action dramatist. He's not exclusively an anime voice actor. Um, and he's shitting on his performance, I guess, because he's um, more of a stage actor than an, a voice actor. Uh, That's I, what's going on here. To answer your question, no, I did not like Macbeth. And not that I have anything really, like, it's one of those things, it, same category as Iron Giant. Excellently written, excellently delivered, typically. It's just, it. I have a so, negative association because of things I went through in my life about it. So... I, I should clarify my 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 disdain towards it is purely personal. I <laughs> part of it is that I, I ended up having the same teacher 
teach it back to back in the same year in two different classes because of absences. And Damn. He, <laughs> yeah. So my English teacher had to go out for surgery. And so I learned Macbeth there from that teacher. And then my Shakespeare class teacher got sick. And this is the year that he passed away. Um, so this other teacher came in, filled the slot. And instead of learning what we were supposed to be learning, he just did Macbeth again and literally did the exact same test. Oh. And I got, I, I aced it. I fucking aced it. But like, it was more of a history test too. God, it was fucking weird. He had us watch. Oh. The only thing about it was he had us watch the Playboy produced version of Macbeth, which is like the only, one of the major film <laughs> versions of it. And he might be like, oh man, there's got to be like hot tits and shit in there. There were tits. They were not hot because it was the fucking hags. It's the hags. Oh, it was such the, a good idea. It, oh, oh, that's such great marketing, though. It is. It oh, is. Boy. But oh my go god, it's like you see the whole coven, and like half of them are naked, and it's like I don't want to see this right now. <laughs> yeah. It, it, uh, like I have partially, I, I have fonder memories the farther I get away from it. But it just like forever that version is burned into my mind as like a gray the stars ugly are mess. still there it's such a it's the film is so dark and gray that i just i just have this like really depressed connotation with oh. it oh oh um, cbfs is that the one with patrick stewart oh that's a good question mm -hmm. i will have to look that up uh Patrick Stewart with Playboy. <laughs> well, no, it was it was produced, but I don't remember if. Well, produced, yeah. No, it was not. That's a television version, apparently. Uh, let me see, pa Macbeth, Playboy. Okay. Um, nineteen seventy one. Um, it's a nineteen seventy one historical drama. Oh, it's directed by Roman fucking Polanski. Oh. What? Oh God. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's the guy, I believe, that made, like, Chinatown. Um, and he's also infamous for, like, sleeping with underage girls. He's, like, oh. he, he, he's he's <laughs> wanted and he fled to Italy. He just lives in Italy now without getting expedited. Oh, shit. <laughs> what yeah. an ass. He, he, is, <laughs> he is a very not great person. Oh, is, wait. Is, uh... Uh, he did make Chinatown. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss that in his filmography here. Yeah. Uh, he's done also a lot of other famous... Like, he's actually a really damned produced. good director. He's an excellent director. It, it was co-produced by Columbia Pictures and Playboy. Um, and it's a shame about being a horrible her. person, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it really sucks. Like, I hate it when I yeah. learn that someone that I actually admire their talent ends up being a terrible person it's uh i was gonna yeah, say it's, it's happening here with jello but i already didn't like jello so i mean uh... <laughs> <laughs> well that's yeah. my reaction with the freaking vote video that he yeah. did so anyway um speaking of which where was i and Harris's music really, sh really shine with what little screen time they're given. I'll just read it from the top. Aram and Oz do an incredible job, as you can see in the above clips. And Alejandro Saab, Hekiichi, Sarah Weidenhoff, Chiharu, and Aaron Dismuke, Ryoji, uh, really shine with what little screen time they're given. But special thanks really need to be given to Hayden Davieu uh, and Nobuko. Now, Buko is probably the best character in the series. She's Riza's best friend who tries to set the main couple up, but she quickly runs out of patience with their antics. Over the course of the localization, No Buko became our favorite character to write. Her repetitive conversations with Risa quickly get more and more insane as we end up voicing our own frustrations through her more often than not eventually headcanoning her as hating Risa terribly, but there's only so many girls to hang out with in high school, and it'll be over once we graduate, so what are you going to do? Jesus Christ. Hilariously... Rewrite a whole character. That's so that's lame. So, that, that's so cool of you. I'm so glad that <laughs> the, the, the original creator gave you permission to do that, right? They gave you permission to do that, yeah, right? Right. 
hilariously, the series actually um, more or less confirms that. this angle by the last few episodes where Nobuko is actively hiding the fact she's moving away from Risa, probably because she knows Risa will freak out about it. Everyone else in the cast knows except Risa what? and Otani. That's... It's very funny. We just happened to write Nobuko's breaking point a little earlier than in the sub did. Um... Hey, number one, I don't fucking believe you. Number two, you're a grown ass man being this freaking salty about over a teenage girl, and that's fucking sad. And yeah. Number three, <laughs> I don't, I don't believe you. The main reason why I don't believe you is I'm guessing this is supposed to be an emotional scene where Nobuko actually sees Risa as her best friend, which would be consistent with what I what I have seen of her thus far again only three episodes so i don't know but i'm guessing she doesn't want to tell her she's finding it hard to tell her so because she doesn't want to hurt her feelings because she knows how she is yeah they're supposed to be best friends of course you would have a hard time telling your best friend that you might be moving away jesus christ my dude my also my best friend is moving to another city very soon and it hurts. I mean, it's only an hour away, but it still yeah. hurts. It's like, man, I'm not going to be able to see you as frequently. Not that I saw you very frequently anyway, but that's just life of this day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, it it, it, mm. it it is very upsetting when suddenly your friendship just gets more distant. And that happens to a lot of people. It's just an unfortunate reality of life. Right. Yeah. Um, also, Kaito Dan is absolutely right. He thinks he's pulling a ghost stories, but he no, didn't he's... get the permission that the ghost stories people. Uh, did. That might actually be a myth. I remember seeing there was a huge discussion with, um, uh, actually, I, I think a Japanese native that oh. knew more about that, and apparently, there's some contention whether or not that was actually permissed or not. Um, oh, yeah, mm. that oh. that is interesting, interesting to me. I just. I don't know who to trust. It's been so long, so official sources are hard to come by, but people do bring up, where are the people sourcing that it was ever permissed? Right. And it's like, also the, none of us really did the, check that, so... The, the story around ghost stories is like, oh, it was so horrible, so the, it, they just let us do whatever we wanted. And it's like, and then I've heard that it actually wasn't that bad. It they, wasn't the popular. people dubbing it thought it was. And is right. kind of sounds like that's what this is. Like you I just heard hate this that, character. <laughs> yeah, I heard that um, they couldn't make any money off of ghost stories. So when they uh, propositioned the company to just make it a gag dub, they're like, "Yeah, sure, whatever. Like maybe you can make some money off of it." Yeah, that was that was the alleged, but apparently it was decently successful. That was the that's the like the pushback claim. I oh. don't know, I, but I, it, it challenged my perception of things because I had always thought that Ghost Stories was a permissed property and it just, it has this fond remembrance of this gag comedy that's become like entrenched in a lot of internet culture as like the first abridged series. However, mm -hmm. now it's like, yeah. well, if they didn't have permission to do what they did, what the fuck? What were you guys Shit. thinking? Holy fuck. Mm -hmm. You can't they, just they... do that. They did right. an Epstein with uh, with oh uh, Hi uh, with Miyazaki's films. Oh shit! Right. Yeah, because he was he was the uh, one that Kaito that Dan, turned. In regards to the whole, well, he was the one that what? I I don't know this Epstein Sorry, Miyazaki connection. Oh, um, it it was Epstein who was the one who had butchered. Um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind to make the the Wind Warriors, and that pr and fearing that he would also do that to Princess Mononoke when that was going to come over to the West, he sent Epstein a katana saying no cuts. Ooh! Oh, <laughs> what a oh what a God badass. damn! Freaking baller, dude! I always knew that. Listen, Miyazaki never had any chill, but that is insane. The only thing yeah. that would have made it better is if he had went there and just decapitated it and have seen himself <laughs> and it would have saved us all a lot of trouble no, and no, a lot of people some better? very bad issues very bad things. yeah honestly no what would be better it would be better if he had brought two katanas gave one to him and challenged him to a duel no no i do not want to give epstein a fair fucking fight all right <laughs> <laughs> true that is true 
Anyway, he's, not he's fighting Miyazaki. All of that is to say, Lenti and I spent a long time on this dub. I'm very proud of the work we did. I think we turned an unremarkable and frustrating oh, 3 out of 10 well. show into a pretty damn funny and mostly watchable 7 out of 10. I want to show oh. off what we did. However, oh, I don't holy. really want to recommend that people watch Love Calm in order to see it. Oh my wow. fucking what? god, dude. What? 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 Not <laughs> only I, do I think I have written the superior five... version, I don't want. Oh, you mean Weinstein, not Epstein? I mean, same thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I got my <laughs> assholes mixed up. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, but like, look, I, dude. Not only are you now actively saying you've you've fixed the version of this show that you were paid to transliterate accurately. Which is not your job. You are not paid to fix this. This is not what you're there to do. But you're now saying you don't want people watching the fucking original. Holy That's, fuck. Dude, this is because what is actual ass. Tricky, <laughs> because if you watch the original, you would know that he's full of fucking shit, which is why I did it. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what did I, like, I can't. Dude, uh, this, is, uh, this is a complete fucking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can't. I can't. I can't. You, do you, it. Guys, you guys, you guys, hold the I gotta go to the bathroom. It's like it's one thing if like someone worked on a project and they're kind of indifferent about it. Like I've seen like Travis Willingham voiced a character Long Q in Fire Emblem Awakening, but Long Q was barely in it, so he didn't really do a lot of like voice work for it. And I saw someone ask him about it, and it was like I don't really know. I don't. There's not, I haven't played the game yet, so I don't have any context, because he didn't do, like, full lines. So it's one thing if you're, like, kind of indifferent about something that you've done, but to actively be like, I don't even want you to watch this. People mm -hmm. shouldn't engage with this product. That's so actually evil. <laughs> yeah, this is why I tell all my friends, um, like... Just because I don't like this doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch this. Just because you get an opinion about something doesn't mean that you shouldn't go out and watch it and form your own opinion. Because just because this one person that you like or me has a certain opinion about this show doesn't mean that you're going to have the same opinion about it. Like, I, I do watch a lot of um, reviews and stuff about people complaining about things that they don't enjoy, but I usually go out and watch stuff that I'm not going to ever care about in the first place anyways. So like something that I know that I'm not going to be interested in or, or who knows, maybe sometimes actually I am interested in watching it because of those reviews. So I'll go out and watch it or I put it on my list to watch it in like seven years because I'm very <laughs> slow. <laughs> but <laughs> like the point is, is that sometimes I don't agree with the reviews of the people that I, that I got my information from in order to watch that show. So like context is going to matter and your own opinion might not correlate to the person who is saying that. And in this case, I can I can very comfortably say I don't think that Jello is being very honest here. Mm -hmm. The worst part about this is is that he literally spent like some of the past like I don't know six fucking paragraphs promoting the freaking right and yeah people that, that that they were they should watch this because it's oh so funny and i'm such a comedic goddamn genius freaking george carlin will come will rise from the dead just just to just to tickle my pickle and i'm like dude shut the fuck <laughs> up but like he, he spent all this time he spent all this time doing exactly that and now he's telling you, but ah, uh, just trust me though. Don't watch it. Well, like, yeah, I mean, he's on, saying man. don't this watch a, the original. This is a con artist act. He's saying mm -hmm. not to watch the the original version. He's saying watch my version. Um, listen, oh, yeah, I'm not Jack and hookers that he doesn't have. Listen. He says the only the only proper way to watch this show is my version. Otherwise, don't watch it at all. Listen, I'm not telling you not to get the Blu-ray. There's a lot of good bits in this show that aren't in the above compilation. There's also a sizable blooper reel made by Fip. Pip? Piff? Piff? Uh, what kind of name is that? Piff! 
That is Blu-ray exclusive. And I'm a snob for blooper reels. And I think it's actually good. But hopefully after reading this explanation, you can tell why I'm so hmm about this franchise, if you know what I mean. No. <laughs> no, I don't. I do what I want. This, this is so much effort to hate on something. Oh, it <laughs> like, gets better. Crazy yes. amount of effort. <laughs> it gets better. Dude. This is one of those series that was written by a very strange person, kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey. And it just gets stranger Eat and stranger ass. the longer you look into it. Okay, look. Motherfucker. <laughs> this is a very stock standard high school anime romantic comedy. Like, this yeah. is par for the course. You want someone that wrote something fucking strange, you can look at me and my first book, all right? That's a strange fucking book. I don't make any bones <laughs> about it, all right? And I'm a strange guy for having written it. I don't fucking hide that. <laughs> but you know what isn't strange? A high school anime rom-com. It's perfectly yeah. normal, motherfucker. Perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. And, like... Like we said, it's it's not even that out there so far. Again, we talked about Peach Girl. Peach Girl is kind of out there uh, in terms of like all of the drama and shit that goes on there. And it has a lot of similar themes to the show. It's almost like they're very common. They're very common tropes in shoujo. Uh, I, I would say... Um, like I, I would probably say, uh, worse is Full Moon Wasagashite, um, because I, I will admit that I uh, can be a hater of some things. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I know, like really controversial, right? I will say that I really hate anything that Arena Tanamura has come up with. I don't think that she is a very good writer. I think that. Uh, the the anime for Full Moon Wasagashite is better than the manga because the anime doesn't have um, a a romance between two people who got plastic surgery in order to uh, get together. Or in this case, one got plastic surgery so that she could go into show business and the other got plastic surgery so that she would find him attractive. And that is that is seen as a good thing or or uh, how one of the side characters um, who is a Shinigami and Shinigami becomes Shinigami when they commit suicide, uh, how that character died at the age of three years old because he knew that his mother hated him so much. So he thought maybe my mom would smile if I killed myself. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Excalibur. Yeah. Uh, oh, I never read your book. Please shill it out for me. Unfortunately, the first book that I wrote, Forge Within Flames, is not really available anymore. You can get it from resellers if you want, but I don't. I don't have it on sale because I cringe every time I think about it. This times, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I really should have gotten an editor and proofreaders. I. It was a real big mistake the way I went about publishing that book. Regardless, uh, if you want something that I have written that I'm not actually like cringing at whenever I read it. Uh, no, uh, you can buy The Artificer, available now on Amazon in digital and in print, as well as set in the same universe, The Wild Kings, my short story set in the same universe. And coming up this week is going to be Exile Unintended, yet another short story set in the same universe, both of those of which will be available in digital on Amazon. And in fact, stay tuned and pay attention to my channel and uh, my Amazon uh, uh, author page because you're going to be seeing a total of eight short stories released in the next few weeks. So everyone stay tuned for those. They're all very good and they they only get better as they go like it starts out i i, I won't say that my first two are the greatest in the world but after the first two they just get progressively <laughs> more and more awesome um as a beta reader for these short stories i will say i like them a lot there are some of them that get kind of experimental and a little bit hard to read sometimes but they are still very interesting uh, the particular, the fourth one that's going to be released was a very big cloud, uh, cloud crowd pleaser. So uh, that one in particular, keep an eye out for. Anyway, or a cloud pleaser. Right. Cloud <laughs> Everyone up in heaven is like really jamming on it. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Actually, considering the topic of the fourth story, that's kind of <laughs> the, the main character will be so happy to hear that. E.
He thinks it's bones. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> The way all the characters talk and interact is wrong. The way Risa is pointed as painted as the good guy, despite makes excuses, bad decisions, makes everything feel like it's written by a woman with I hate drama in her Twitter bio, and then five separate what? call out tweets right below it. You get the sense the author sees the world the same way Risa Koizumi does, and Risa Koizumi as a character only makes sense if she's a psychopath who does not understand human empathy what literally what what are you talking about he just does not like women he just doesn't like women (laughs) the only thing that i can think of in in this case it's it's what also there's another layer to this that we're forgetting to to mention maybe her behavior is much more normal in the context of a japanese society yeah, maybe. <laughs> Be right back. Also I have to take my dog out. It's all good. Or a rom com. Or, you know. A Japanese okay. society yeah. set rom com about high schoolers. It's almost as if maybe you weren't a teenage Japanese girl back in the <laughs> mid thousands, motherfucker. Jesus yeah, Christ, like, man. Like, this goes back to the whole freaking stupid tall girl comparison. Because, mm-hmm. yes, in America, America, fucking freaking uh, uh, tall women aren't, you know, seen as cringe, you know, in these parts. But in Japan, they're, they have entirely different beauty standards. Uh, mm-hmm. Largely, a lot of a lot of it, which can be attributed to certain dietary things, differences that they have over there, all that jazz. But fact of the matter is, it's completely different. So of course, the characters are not going to be written the same way as you would find in a typical story made in the West. Uh, ellipsis Why mark. the fuck would you not have this context here? You want to be a localizer for anime when you don't understand something this fucking simple? Uh, ellipsis Mark, would you be interested in having an audiobook made? I'm always looking for more XP. Uh, I've actually considered doing an audiobook myself at some point. I just don't know how to go about it when it comes down to like files and the like. Uh, or how to like get that on Amazon, that kind of stuff. Um I might look at your stuff, but ultimately I might be the one that wants to do that. I may hire actors for other characters, but that's still up in the air. So, yeah. Um. That aside, though, the, the, the accusations towards Reese's character, again, three episodes, Twilight can probably attest to this more than I can. Yeah. But this dude is absolutely fucking lying about her. 110 yeah, no. goddamn percent. She is nowhere near a psychopath. She's a little bit petty and vain and immature. So is Otani. That's well, yes, but we already <laughs> established his uh, possible sexism. Possible. Um, that's not the main thrust of why why his takes on this are bad. Even just divorcing all that, it just doesn't make sense given what we've seen of the show so far. Yeah, no, like, the the reason why I said that is because he's focusing so much on Risa, but he says nothing about Otani, mm-hmm. despite the fact that, like I said before, they are two peas in a pod, they share the same brain cell, they have the same personality and everything, but he focuses on right, Risa. Guys. Like, guys, you gotta understand how, how how much it takes to convince me that someone is a blatant fucking liar. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, or to say that somebody is a liar publicly. Okay, it, it takes a whole lot of you guys show me like the ins and outs of everything of whatever is is going on to for me to admit publicly that this person is a goddamn is a goddamn con artist. This dude, I'm seeing this shit black and white, plain as day. And I watch the show, sub and dub, and I have no idea what the fuck this dude is talking about. There's no other explanation other than he's fucking lying. Yeah. Like, it's Um, just unbelievable to me. And and like I said, there there are a couple of instances in, in the dub of the couple of episodes that I watched that was in the dub where they smoothed out some of the nuances to a character's personality and 
maybe it maybe it was a rougher uh thing but like sure. that doesn't necessarily make it bad a bad aspect to a character's personality doesn't make them a bad person it just means that they are a flawed realistic human being mhm mm oh i'm it, sorry it's I, just I, so someone, frustrating who was it michael p that said jello the discord messages leaked this might not be relevant, but Jello is gay openly and very so his biases to the male lead could be that reason. Oh. Oh. So I'm mm. right. That's... I'm right. He does have a bias for Ot uh, Otani. Interesting. So, so here's another uh here here's yeah, the instance that I was thinking life. about of them cutting <laughs> nuance. And I'm just gonna read this whole thing because I sent this to Raymond last night. I says uh otani says in japanese i'll um i'll change her from her perverted ways to i'll make her see the light i said that that was a better translation for that one um i said i think that's honestly understandable i told you the wording confused me because i wasn't sure if this character was supposed to be a lesbian or if she was just supposed to genuinely be afraid of men so uh, the perverted line in, in Japanese makes it seems more like she's a lesbian, uh, whereas this makes it clear, uh, which is what the actual case is, that she, no, she genuinely is afraid of men. She is just that nervous of a person. Um, and this oh, makes it clear Chiharu, from the very right? beginning. Yeah, Chiharu. Um this this was when I was first starting to watch the shows. I was giving Raymond a bit of a play by play as I was going through. Yeah. Uh, later on, that there's there's, the first... yeah, the first couple of episodes. Um, Chiharu's boyfriend at this point, when when Risa is still trying to to woo him, uh, there's there's a scene where they go to a pool together, like all of them as a group, and uh, Risa is trying to get her crush to to swim with him uh, to swim with her and he he's a very monotone person he is very low energy so in the japanese he said if i didn't want to swim i wouldn't have come you guys seem interesting but in the dub he says that's what we came here for though i was having fun just watching so it makes suzuki this guy seem like he's not enjoying himself rather than just being low energy. That is the kind of context changes that I think are kind of hurtful to the characterization of some of these characters. It's very subtle and you could overlook it, but I think that that destroys a lot of the nuance to their characters saying that a character genuinely isn't uh, enjoying himself rather than just being low energy. Uh, there's 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 a question though to be asked about that is is that intentional or do you think that was carelessness i can't say because for sure. like um, that there there is a distinction to be made between the active changes that he has went out of his way to make with certain characters um at least in his version of the at uh, least dub versus mm -hmm. things that might have just accidentally happened along the way yeah and right. unless if we have a uh, further knowledge about what happened behind the scenes when writing these <laughs> moments, we can't know. <laughs> oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. I sent it in DMs. Oscar Pine. <laughs> Oscar Pine. <laughs> this is where I put a ruby. If I had one. If we. <laughs> Dude, if we if we have like a sound bite for the streams, we gotta put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh. You really did flip into like villain mode to like growl out Oscar's name. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was already in in an, an over the top like voice for that. <laughs> All right. Let us continue here. Of note, the mangaka also makes a cameo in the final episode of the anime. She shows up as a fashion designer, and everybody oh, praises go. how pretty and talented she is. She then tells Risa, It's my job to make you look good. 
I think you failed, ma'am. Lenti was the head writer on this, and all the decisions were final, but I did tell them Fuck that if off. we didn't cut the characters praising the mangaka out of the episode in our dub, I would quit the co-writing position on the spot. Who the fuck Did you are you? Fail the bridger. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, what? Who what? Are you? <laughs> if when you get piss yourself because Bye. the manga okay. shows up. Bye. I read, I read Stephen King's The Dark Tower series. Do you know what's in the last book? Dude. The characters make it to reality and actually meet actually Stephen King. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I couldn't even be mad because it's like, yeah, it's his series. <laughs> like, yes. I also it's they they didn't even like, uh they didn't even do that. The 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 mangaka still shows up in the anime and she still has her moment. So, fuck off. Apparently, you didn't quit. <laughs> whiny whiny little bitch baby. Oh, maybe that's why he's doing this. He's so angry over that. He's getting revenge. <laughs> Oh my god, it's all coming together, people. Yeah. Like, imagine if someone, like, he hired, like, one of his writers or whatever who worked on Epithet Erased turned around and did something like this. Like, yeah. just talk complete shit about him, say he's a terrible writer, he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, what, I... Like, what makes you think you can do the same for a project you've been working on? The um, I, I was right. tempted. I was talking with the Twilight last night. I was tempted to be like, I'm going to take his video vote that was so controversial. And I was it's controversial because it suddenly goes incredibly one sided towards a political position. I was going to take it and I was going to flip it on its head and go for the complete opposite political position. But it still act like it was his yeah. saying it. Yeah. Like I was going to like try and make it his. It's his, still his video, but I just fixed it for him. Like that's what I was going to try and right. do, but like, I I I a I know that not enough people would take it the right way. They would all just call me a uh, a uh, a shill for certain political candidates. And it's like I don't want to, I don't want anything political on my whatever. fucking channel like that. I don't, uh, like that's. But at the same time, I also know like it wouldn't. It wouldn't do anything. This man's ego is so fucking rock solid in his head. He's not going to, it's not going to dent it. I, clearly. <laughs> I think even he's now like, he's sitting like in his chair Jesus. thinking. <laughs> I think he's just sitting in his chair thinking, no, it's the children who are wrong. Yeah. Yeah. He, he thinks. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, dude. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks right. that in terms of writing, he is the next best thing since sliced bread. He can. Like this, this is Which the thing. Which Brad doesn't even disgust. write. What is he thinking? Yeah, like <laughs> it's it's kind of like this disgusting mentality that I I see in a lot of these circles lately, where they just seem to hate Japan, everything about Japan and Japanese culture. So they're going to right. they're going to fix it uh, to make it better for yeah. for like the the actual audience which are anime weebs which which seems to be like a lot of the central problems with a lot of these like um with so i wouldn't say all of them or a lot of them but like a certain subsection of bad actors within the localizer profession um because here's the thing there are two sides to this whole debate the outrage uh uh, the the outrage merchants and the bad actor localizers. I fucking hate both of these people. Number mm -hmm. one, especially the outrage merchants, because they are. Uh, there are some aspects of this whole thing that they take very out of proportion. And the last thing I want this to be is this stream to be, or any of us want this stream to be, is just an endorsement on their side on critically. But the carnal of truth is, is that when there are changes that are inevitable when it comes to localizing anime because blah, 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 English and Japanese, incredibly different languages, a lot of different nuances in both, whatever, whatever. The whole thing is you got to keep the spirit and the message of the original work, no matter the cost. Mm -hmm. Like, because even if it's what you don't personally like or don't agree with, that's the job. You sign mm -hmm. it on your contract. 
You got paid for doing exactly that. That's what you're supposed to fucking do. That's what you're being paid for. That's what the customer wants. And when you step outside of that line, don't be surprised when people got a problem with it. If if you can't, and here's the thing, no matter the cost, that means if you cannot directly translate it comfortably into English, then you raw translate it and you just try to roll with it. Like, they're... they're you cannot yep. just take these the, these liberties. I mean, obviously, you're, you can't take these intentional. It got it pisses me off. Man. Like, like the, the process yeah. of translating is so like special, and like you're taking someone else's property, someone else's story that they put their energy into, and you have to try to like just make that accessible to someone in a different manner. The idea of changing it because you don't like something, it's, it'd be like, if oh, well, I don't like that this couple ended up together, so I'm going to change the story. But it's not your story. It doesn't matter if you like the characters and you don't like the characters, or you like the story or you don't like the story. You have to try to adapt it as faithfully as you can and get the in like the meaning across as best you can. I really whether don't you like, like that. it or not. <laughs> I, I really don't like that Walter White is actually oh, he's killing people and he's just he's just a good old <laughs> fashioned teacher of chemistry. No, he should be. We we got we got to change it. We got to make it so that that he's he's. You know, he's a good dude all the way through. We don't do we don't worry about it. We'll just cut a few yeah. things in. Oh, oh, uh, what are you talking about? That Cersei and and her brother are getting it on. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't worry. We gotta change it. No, no, no. The distant cousins. Look, everyone banged <laughs> a cousin in the Middle Ages, but brother and sister, we can't have that. <laughs> Fuck off with I that know. shit. Man, this freaking Shinji Akari kid, this Shinji Akari kid is too much of a whiny bitch, man. We gotta make <laughs> him a real fucking hero. We gotta make we gotta make it so he has all the bitches that he masters the Evangelion right away, and we just get <laughs> him going, and we're gonna have a real fucking mecha show for real fucking mecha fans. That's what we want, ladies and gentlemen. That's why, like, that's one of the main reasons people have such vitriolic memories of four kids. Yeah. Like, uh, do you remember One well, Piece? Where they didn't have guns, they I had, mean, like, yeah. a Looney Tunes-style, pun like, punching glove machines. Yeah. <laughs> do you not yeah. remember yeah. Sanji's yes. lollipop? <laughs> thank you, thank you for that, because I was no, actually Greg going said... to say my exceptions to this. Um... You you made the transition perfect for me. Thank you, Critter. Um, I, <laughs> I was going to say that I think that there are certain exceptions for shows that are meant to be for small smaller children. Um, it's a problem when you make a show that's for older children into a show for younger children, like what they did with One Piece. That mm -hmm. is a problem. However, yeah. for like, a dub like Pokemon or Digimon, I think that there is a little bit more leeway because kids aren't going to understand that yeah, these shows, like kids aren't going to, like a nine-year-old isn't going to understand that this doesn't take place in the, in the, the country that they live in. They, they don't know what a Japan mm -hmm. is. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and when certain yeah. things, <laughs> the one dub thing See, in Japan, Digimon. You're not smoking? <laughs> the one dub thing in Digimon that I really like recognized, there was a scene pretty early on where Tai and Agumon are in like a haunted mansion. And yeah. in the original version, Agumon had like massive diarrhea or something. Yes. And they were talking about it. And then Ogremon busts mm -hmm. out to like attack them. But it, they changed it in the dub to get rid of the dialogue talking about pooping. And I imagine it's just because four kids didn't want to have pooping dialogue in their cartoon. It, it was Saban. <laughs> it was it was Saban, not four kids. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. I just remember yeah. being so. <laughs> you wonder the fun thing about it is that we're we're currently for a different podcast that's being recorded actually tomorrow. We, we're watching through um, Power Rangers, which was also Saban, and occasionally you will hear the same exact stings and same exact music between the two shows. Like there are times where I'm like, "Wait a minute, that's fucking Digimon!" Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. great. Also, also, I do, I do actually want to to say, like, even though that I uh, 
that I did say, like, oh, uh, kids don't know what a Japan is. Digimon did explicitly say that these kids are from Japan, though. So, like, even though that they took a lot of liberties um, in order to translate the jokes to make kids happier, and they did soften a lot of things for kids uh, over in the West to understand and be able to take better, um, they didn't they didn't try to hide the fact that these kids weren't American. Um, cause the, in early on in the show, when they were in the digital world, they, they said, Hey, are you done with those chopsticks? Because we need to eat this food. And then later on there, they said, we live, we have to go back to Odaiba. And, and in the movie, they're like, well, that's all like Colorado. How are we supposed to get to America? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh. yeah, to be fair, like, like I am. I, well, well, it is a violation I'm of a what we set up. I am happy they censored the poop in in that. I'm just I'm not one for for scatological humor, honestly. Yeah, not, um, I'm, I'm not Jello Apocalypse. Uh, the The it whole is, reason why I'm Digimon Jell-O-Pop. has a whole lot of poop jokes in the first place is because the concept of poop is really funny to Japanese children, apparently. Uh, it, you know, like seven year olds, they just, I, they just think well, that the word, uh, the word poop is really funny. So, so they, they had that, um, and they just changed it to sludge in English and that's fine. <laughs> like it's right. not, like, it's not as funny like, to us over in the West I'm, and that's fine. Yeah. I'm a little bit in terms of the individual actors in four kids whose job is to localize this stuff. I, I, I am less likely to, like, you know, place any huge amount of blame or whatever on them because, you know, they're, they're tasked with trying to get this over into the West and what, the West has different standards for what kids are a, should be able to watch on TV than what Japan does, all that stuff. Eric Stewart, who you guys know as the voice of Brock in Seto Kaiba, recently Hell talked yeah. about it. And it's all, it all makes sense. You can probably find out on Twitter somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Where I have a problem with is when they outright change the, fu- like, fundamental aspects of the characters and their dynamics. For example, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds coming at you again with that. In the mm-hmm. first episode, in the sub-version, uh, Yusei gets, uh, runs into basically a, a police guy, um... And because one of his friends stole a this top secret like computer chip which will basically make his dueling motorcycle run better um that's what it is and he came after him and you say is trying to duel this guy so that he could let the kid go that's basically the point of that but in the su- in in the dub they changed it so that the police dude intentionally planted that chip for Yusei's friend uh, to pick up so that he can track down Yusei to put him in jail. Because they had, I guess in the dub, they established that he has this sort of cat and mouse game going on with the guy. And I'm all like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you... Yusei! Card <laughs> games on motorcycles! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, but this completely changes the dynamic because the whole point is that in Satellite, the place where you say is from, you know, you have to steal and do a lot of shady shit in order to survive, including you say himself. And now you're just removing that crap for the sake of bad jokes like Trudge, the officer, um, used to you know uh basically be a hall monitor to you say back when he was in the academy or some shit and i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> there's a reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! zero never got adapted into english <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, ryan lupin <laughs> says netflix you know ang is too childish he should be all business all the time we, we talked about that at the beginning of the stream yeah mm-hmm. we did. Uh, anyway let's let's continue on <clears throat> mm-hmm. we're near we're near the bottom here just for fun, I've also got a little compilation of screenshots from when I was digging into the other versions of Love Com and messaging Marissa about it. I think some of these are funny. Maybe you will too. Sadly, those were not archived. So, oh, unfortunate. Dang. I checked. Dang. 
Oh, and Gosh. before I forget, I also wrote the English lyrics for Shogun... Shogunese. Shogunese? Shogunese. Shogunese. The, uh, the Umi Bozu song that appears a few times throughout the series. That sea monk joke near the end of the compilation is probably the most obtuse gag in the entire dub, and I hope some longtime Love Com fans appreciate it. Why you hate the series? Pause right there. Yeah. That did not happen. That did not <laughs> happen. He didn't even change that in the dub. That didn't make it in. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> The nerd. Nice. <laughs> yeah. At least not in the first three episodes. I I made sure to check, and they call him Umi Bozu in the dub too. Uh, in the original subtitles, the rapper that Risa and Otani obsess over is called Sea Monk instead of Umi Bozu, probably because it was translated in 2007, and keeping the name of a mythological Japanese creature might have confused U.S. viewers back then. Oh, it might be okay. I yeah. might be wrong well, about that. It depends it on the, the it sub. depends on the supper. Like there are different suppers. Some suppers are like very strictly. I'm going yeah. to literally translate everything. I have a version of the Digimon Tamer sub in which they literally translate all of the attack names so that you don't actually know what's going on because they 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 just they don't translate it properly. <laughs> um, is this a good time to party. mention that I actually met Gabumon's uh, voice actor, Kirk Thornton? Nice. Oh. <laughs> And then Otakon in 2019. He's a really nice guy. He also played Saix in Kingdom Hearts. Gabumon's and a really Kisame good character. And Naruto. I, 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 it's been a while since I've heard him speaking. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's been a lot of different roles over the years. Really oh, wait, he voiced Saix? No, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> We can't dive into another hour-long uh, conversation about Kingdom Hearts. It's <laughs> only to watch. It was only sixteen minutes. <laughs> I counted. Oh, um, we reverted this change and kept Umi Bozu as the rapper's name. So this is a meta gag where Otani hears Sea Monkey and asks if Risa's referring to Sea Monk. This joke is so stupid. I'm so happy they let us put it in there. What? I am confused on whether or not uh, you like this anime. I hope you step on the Lego. <laughs> so are you I happy you, you made a pun? Are you not happy you made a pun? What? Uh, what? Was it a pun <laughs> that was already there you just kept? What is the... My favorite line in the dub would always be, Good line, no notes. Okay. Oh dear. Nobuko had a non-stop right. slew of absolutely insane lines in the sub that were terrible and made no sense. See that bonkers constipation line from the live action in the imager linked above. Oh, sadly. They were like that. 99% of the time we changed these, but that writing session, we were absolutely exhausted and tired of fixing them. I think one of us saw what... Uh, that in the subtitles said, good line, no notes, sarcastically. And then we both said, fuck it. That's what Chiharu is saying now. Oh, no. Fuck off. That Two is just Legos. you being lazy. Shut up. Don't Two act fucking as though you did that on purpose. I, no, I, I think it was dead or <laughs> someone, someone in, 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 I don't want to attribute it to anyone necessarily, but there was someone in here that I think accurately said, I wish for in every shoe you wear, there is a pebble. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm I'm getting so upset that my my dog is coming over and and like trying to give me kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, yeah, you're he's all worried you're, you're about me. Support dog. You're yeah, your emotional support dog. he's a good boy. Similarly, Otani talks about slapping Risa nonstop in the sub. We removed almost all of those except maybe one or two instances because having your leading man's catchphrase be "I'm going to physically assault you" is not great. He it's says that to off. everyone, though. Who Fuck us. Just... Like, yeah, who doesn't do that for everybody? What are you? I say about? that. I, I just, say I... that. Like that's such a common thing. Lots of people say that to people who you are friends with. That's yeah. the biggest thing. I, I will <laughs> hit you. I say that to frequently to a lot of people whenever they're saying something silly or annoying. Mm -hmm. It happens. I, 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 Raymond, yell out, I'm gonna Raymond, stab I, you multiple yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I... guys, I, I like to say that I'm glad to say, I, I'm so sorry to say that this will be the final podcast uh, live stream that I'm going to be with you guys. I cannot stand this abusive environment any longer. Oh, shut up or I'll slap you. <laughs> I tried to put in my favorite line deliveries and my favorite gags we wrote into the show in the above compilation. What was your favorite line? Do you have any questions about the production? I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Leave a question below. Yeah, I don't think he actually so wanted to answer anyone's that, questions. No, that he did. He answered slipper. questions. Yeah. He actually Give answered back questions. That Charlie. Give oh. me back that slipper. Oh, God. So <laughs> we're through the main body, but we still got things to cover. You can't have that slipper. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. So, from Daniel. So, I have to ask, because I'm curious, what kind of conflicting, uh, what kind of conflicting thoughts, if any, do you have about making the show better? Because, like you said, the old LC fans will come in and be tricked, but on the uh, off chance the dub hits like crazy, it might make the new LC, it might make new LC fans. As maybe the most critical person I've ever seen in my entire life, how does the <laughs> that line? Um, how does the fact that there's a chance that you've co uh, courted people to this series make you feel? Also, I wonder how long it'll take for uh, all the "it's not true" to the original fuckers to come out of the woodwork uh, to be like woke translators ruining my anime. Uh, pretty damn quick, as you could probably tell. I mean, number one, this dude has been the furthest thing from woke the entire goddamn. Well, time. no, 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 no. <laughs> like, let's be very clear here. This is this is the people like when people complain about wokeness. This is the shit we complain about. That I will include myself in that yeah. because it's not genuine. It's wokeness yeah. as a shield yeah. for hypocrisy. For for well, it's hypocrisy. It's the shield for actual bigotry. It's it's performative. Mm -hmm. They yeah, they it's, want it's, they want yeah, to get brownie points by pretending like they care a lot more than they do, but they don't actually know how to go about it. So it comes yeah. off as really disingenuous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of the time, I don't use the word woke, but what I do like to say is, is that this is in the... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Did we lose oh. him? <laughs> Hello? The moment Hello? he was going to describe gotta, you, gotta, you were just <laughs> the height of what you were going to say. Oh my god, okay. Well, I don't like to use woke, but um, what I do like to use is uh, that this is an example of people co-opting progressive thoughts and and ideas and principles in order to gain social capital and which is insanely scummy because the whole point of it is to uplift you know minority voices and to you know uphold much more like uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically a much better and uh, much better uh, moral principles that we can act in societal standards that we can all just be able to get much more equitably, right? But these people, mm -hmm. or, or people like him anyways, like Brandon here, are co-opting that shit in order to just make themselves look good. Oh, God, what he says here. See, oh. the thing is, we didn't change the oh, intent man. of the scenes. Bullshit. Even the original Seiko stuff was, in the end, supposed to be pro-trans. It was just terribly done 2007's pro-trans writing. Oh my fucking god, are what? you <laughs> mentally disabled? I, I don't say that very often, but that was my knee-jerk reaction to you, motherfucker. It's, it's, it's the thing, it comes across as he doesn't like the show for arbitrary reasons and he has no actual critique to back up his weird burning hatred for the show so instead he's he's inventing new problems out of it oh well it's actually it it's it's kind of pro trans but it's not as pro trans as me cuz i need to convince you that this is not a good show to validate my weird hatred of this character and again yeah. it, he ended up making it worse so like mm -hmm. 
Yes. <laughs> I'd say the biggest thing we change, change, is a number of scenes where Risa is upset at Otani. We did our best to tweak it so she often addresses something specific he does that she dislikes, like him not being explicit with a rejection and stringing her along. Sometimes she's even upset and realizes mid-conversation a lot of her frustration is coming from her own actions or inability to communicate. These nuances are not in the original sub even a little bit, but without they them, are. you are literally just watching the lies, same lies, episode lies, yeah. where Risa confesses to Otani then runs away before getting an answer nine times in a row. It's exhausting. It's boring. In our version, you at least get some semblance of character growth. Shut the fuck up and you, know you idiot who knows nothing about right storytelling and who knows nothing about i don't know if you've even genuinely watched an anime in your life because you sound like somebody who who has watched maybe like a generic anime and now you think that you're a fucking expert, but you still have, like, this Western storytelling superiority complex. So you're like, yeah, I like the animus, but I think that they could be better as long as I change it to make it more Western. You watched and, Angel and Beats and thought West that was it. Yeah, like, Jesus. He cracked the code after watching the big three. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I'm... I'm gonna go back to like his old content now, like his this is basically series with like new eyes. Yeah, because yeah, this all has really made me lose a lot of faith in what I thought he had as a storyteller, or at least even as just a critic. I, I mean, I always like he just seems to hate his criticism of Ruby hate was all very forms. surface level. Like, let's be very clear yeah. about that. Like. He, he didn't really dig deep into it. He just made fun of Ruby. And it was very funny. Like, I thought it was very funny. It was mostly on point. But it was very surface-level things about the show. Yeah. It didn't really dig into mm -hmm. any of the meat. And it does make me question if that legitimately is his the depth that he goes to when analyzing something. Well, he... Well, about, like, you mentioned the Steven Universe one earlier. Yeah. And... I was like thinking about it. It's like, mm. oh, he doesn't like Pearl because she has too many emotions, and he doesn't like Amethyst because she showed too many emotions. And I'm like, hmm. Well, he actually went into depth mm. about a scene in Am with Amethyst, and that was the garage scene with. Yes. Uh, and so like he he was directly criticizing that thing. Like he was directly criticizing Amethyst for that, and it's like, okay, that's understandable. But that was like. Um, I'm pretty sure that that was like a third of his entire video was just talking about that in particular. Yeah. And it was like two seasons old by the time his video came out too. Like yep. Amethyst had to evolved yes. way past that point. <laughs> yep. Uh, he just talked about all the filler and it's like, yeah, I understand that there is a lot of filler in the show and a lot of people were upset because um, the show was, they... Nickelodeon did the Steven Bomb things and that uh. and when there was an entire Steven Bomb yeah. that had come out for the first time in 6 months and n 9 out of 10 of those episodes are all filler. Yeah, it's very annoying, but at the same time <laughs> like stop it. <laughs> a good example of a change like this is after Kazuki assaults Risa. In the dub, Otani is just pissed at Risa for getting sub. assaulted. Sorry, in the sub but that's insane. So instead we change it so Otani's initial anger at seemingly being cheated on changes to frustration at Risa for being so blasé about being assaulted. She does not care at all and in fact never talked to Kazuki about this in either dub or the sub. I realized that if my partner had been taken advantage of, there was a re very real chance that I would be mad for them, especially if I were taking uh, it really well especially if they were taking it really well. So that's how Otani's anger manifests. You know what? I don't believe I, you. We didn't, I didn't get to this episode. I was hoping that I would be able to like be able to screech forward and watch episode 22 before the stream started. That didn't end up happening. Um, but I can imagine that this is very similar to the episode in Peach Girl where Kaidi kissed Momo uh, when she was sleeping on the bench during work, it's it's. Spoiler. I'm pretty sure that it's a stock standard uh, shoujo thing at that point. 
like it's it's no different um because like the characters confront each other all the time about like oh well why did um why did you do this well why did you let this person kiss you and it's like well i didn't do that and it's like that's that's part of the drama and like because japanese culture the way that they that they deal with their monogamous relationships is very different um kissing is uh considered a bedroom only thing in japan i'm pretty sure so like kissing is a lot more of a big deal in japan than it is to us in the west like kissing isn't a big deal oh my god is that why so few anime actually have a big kissing scene yes oh Oh. yeah oh (laughs) it it is it is considered a bedroom only activity that is huh. wild to me. Huh. But I know it, 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 like it makes Jello's, sense. It makes sense. It, yeah. it sounds like Jello's just upset the characters aren't him. Like they don't react the way he personally would yes, react. Yes, that is definitely. Like I get the feeling he just screams at his TV a lot whenever he watches shows. It's like, that's not what I would do. It's like, because yeah, you're not To this some character. extent, I understand. Yeah. Like everyone has that compulsion of yelling at the scream, right. no, don't do that. Like everyone has that. But realizing that a character yeah. is acting in a consistent way with themselves is important. It's something that most viewers get the fuck right. over at some point, and they start to enjoy yelling at the screen and then seeing the characters do something completely fucking stupid. It's like going into a horror movie mm-hmm. expecting characters to act rationally. Oh, yeah. of course I want to see it done right, and I'm annoyed when it doesn't, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to say, like, oh, maybe that's still in character for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just want right. to say, because I, I can be very paranoid about this, um, it's been a very long time since I've since I've heard that, and an actual Japanese person can probably either correct me or give, like, better nuance to that, but I do remember hearing from people who actually lived in Japan, like, describing uh, things like this, that, that kissing is a much bigger deal in Japan than it is over in the West. It is considered something that you don't, it, it's considered very inappropriate to do PDA on. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know that PDA in general is just a, like hand-holding in public is a big deal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, well, if hand-holding is a big deal right. in Japan, what do you think kissing yeah, is then? Yeah, yeah. Um, Excalibur, um, rumor oh, is yeah. he apparently made the Ruby video because he, they didn't that's... hire him. Again, rumor, I may be wrong, but in hindsight, <laughs> that uh, why is very surface level. I what? don't know. I, I, I'm sure about I'll that take one. that with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that sounds a little bit would silly. Be funny. It, it, it's, it's probably it's probably not which which. Well, you say. It I mean, I wouldn't silly. put it past him after this. So far, but uh, yeah, apparently he was. He, I guess he would have done this even if he got hired in the first place, because clearly he doesn't care about shit talking the things he's worked on. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The trick is to change yeah, so the intent. Let's say that it's probably not true, but it feels true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the trick. Oh God, is disgusting. Go. The trick is to change the intention of the characters to something that makes sense for them, while also keeping the intention of the overall story. No, no, no. no. You no. keep the intention no. of the story you and the characters. The you keep the flaws intact. You are not in a bridge characters series that's flaws. doing things which is like in a bridge series actually is probably illegal under fair use, but people do it, and people can get away with it because uh, to some extent. It actually drives numbers to the original product. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And average is usually classified as parody. Or so it, yeah. it's it's it, yeah. it's going in advertising itself as not the official intention of the original story. Correct. Uh, Dude, as... Zero Connect is right. Dude, stop. It's time to stop. As <laughs> for the not to true to the original fuckers, I don't care what they think. Idiots who assume all dubs are bad and all subs are good or vice versa don't actually have any analytical skills and their opinions simply don't matter. They've decided they're going to hate our work no matter what. That is not fucking true. Some of my no. favorite versions of anime are in yeah. dub form. Steinsgate is not the same anime in English that it is in Japanese. And it, this is because just the natural things they needed to change to translate it to English. And the voice mm-hmm. acting itself is incredible in both versions. But I happen to prefer the English one because I, it's the one that I personally connect, connect with the most. I adore a good dub. Give me a good dub and I'll be your fan. Eureka 7 has a really damned yeah. good dub. 
fucking uh, Peach Girl yes. has a pretty good damn dub. Like, it's especially Princess with the Tutu's. comedy. <laughs> Princess Bebop Tutu's dub is on par dub. with the Japanese dub. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, I could watch that in either English or Japanese, but I prefer English because if I'm going to watch something that's equivalent in quality, why not watch it in my own language? Hey, Full mm -hmm. Metal Alchemist. Brotherhood. Yes. Uh, both, both, and, both of those Lagoon. are fucking incredible. I've not seen Black Lagoon. I need yes. to. I know that's on my list. Um, okay, Black Lagoon's dub is great. Actually, Cowboy Bebop is a great example because there's like... Remember that scene where in, in, in like the movie, the famous one where Spike says, I love, it, I, I love a lady who can kick my ass and shit? Yeah. So what? right before that scene happens, like Spike gets like a gun held to his head and in the dub, he gets a little more specific. It's like, hey, I like the Tor Tor uh, Toreador thing you got going on. And in the, in the sub, it's all like, I like the outfit. I prefer the dub because that is absolutely something Spike would fucking say. 100%. Uh, Code Geass dub? That'd be yes. like a Tuesday. Code Geass dub is actually... Yes. What's great about it is that not only is it Johnny Young Bosch's potentially best performance in an anime, though his Vash is incredible... It's um, definitely one with the most range. It's the one with the most range. It's, it's it is one, well, it yeah. maintains the heart of the character of Lelouch, and it's actually a strangely different interpretation. Like it, it actually it it keeps the core of the character, but also makes you think of a. I don't know how to describe it other than it wasn't. I don't think it was intentional, but it worked out that way. Um, it, like I, I don't know how to describe yeah. it. Like, there are slight differences that will happen. They're just naturally there, but like. It's whether or not you're trying to keep the intention of the work. Um, oh, mm -hmm. another one that we we mentioned on, on before, Fruits Basket. It actually mm -hmm. added in the German accent Fruits for, Basket is great. Uh, for Momiji, which yeah. was massive to his character. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it really was. It, this feels like Jello preemptively trying to shield himself from criticism. It is. By throwing a random excuse out there, yeah. which shows that he's incredibly Dude. sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this guy is trying to farm the outrage. He knows that this shit is going... Like, whether or not this whole thing got leaked or whatever, he knows the general landscape of this whole thing. He, he, even if he's ignorant about our statements like ours and how people aren't... Everyone who, who hates these kinds of changes are just outrage merchants. He doesn't care. He wants to farm them either way. Michael P., yes, watch Fruits Baskets. Which is... It's, it's great. The, the, it's the, the 2019 else. version in specific. The 20, 2001 version is rough, except for one very good episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> my... my um, Well, my favorite episode as well, episode five of the original dub. Because yeah. that, um, remember, you said that that added in a lot of things yes, that you that had in complaint of the 2019 and that, version. That, that actually would be, if you get to episode, is it also episode five in the... In the I think so, yeah. So I if think you get to episode, episode five, five, basically watch those back to back. It actually gives you different perspectives on the same events. It's actually kind of cool in that way. Yeah. Um, okay. Um Interesting. We a we actually already saw a post from some dumbass praising the original subtitles from episode one when it says, big or small, if you've got a dick, you're a man, right? Because he read that as anti-trans and was happy the localization team didn't Dragon Maid the line, which refers to the Dragon Maid dub giving Lukoa funny lines about dressing how she wants, despite the patriarchy. Lots of sweaty racist nerd boys got mad That's about, not even what uh, they about that it, one. Dude, okay. one I actually, I know that I've watched both versions of that and I, I am angry about that line. Um, yeah. Lots of sweaty racist nerd boys got mad about that one because they didn't want woke politics in their TV <laughs> show. Even though that dialogue was literally the character going, here's why I like to dress with my tits out. Very funny. That person, pr very, very funny. That person praised anti-trans rhetoric in one of the most famous examples of early trans rep in anime with the most trans dub of all. Whoops, dummy should have watched the rest of the show first before watching his whole ass, before showing his whole ass. Now, I, I love how he just assumes that everyone who got mad at that were men. I, I guess we don't exist as women. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, like, yeah, true. Also, De Dedorex, a Yuri anime well, you vaguely remember then, being Strawberry Panic. I did not like Strawberry Panic. I got like three <laughs> episodes in and stopped. Uh, it, it was so boring. 
I was so bored by Strawberry Panic. <laughs> I, I, I know that's problem. I, I, I did the three episode rule and dropped it. I can't. Um, now, first of all, if there was a guy talking about anti-trans rhetoric, yeah, no, fuck that guy. That that guy was that guy was wrong with what he was trying yeah. to hit the angle he was taking on this. Like, mm-hmm. if he was, but pr- to project that onto yeah. everyone who hates the Dragon Maid dub. Yeah. Also, yeah, the Dragon Maid is fucking dis- the line in Dragon Maid. The reason why it was so upsetting was because it was talking about Japanese decency standards. It wasn't necessarily about patriarchal standards. It was a completely yes. different context for the line. You were erasing the Japanese culture that was present in it, and also the culture of the characters in mind. Because I'm pretty sure in the original anime. In the original uh, sub, Lukoa didn't Mm -hmm. understand why she was dressing up the way she did. She was told to do so by her, uh, um, by Shota, by the person she was staying with. Meanwhile, in the the English version of it, she somehow was like, oh, I decided to dress up uh, to, so because of outdated patriarchal standards. And it's like, that's not at all. That's the com- yeah, completely the, which unrelated. kind of ruins the whole immersion. Yeah, it ruins the immersion that Luca is this dragon goddess who doesn't really know or care all that much about typical human standards of society. That's half the fun of the anime about a dragon maid. It's about the dragons not fitting in with local culture. You know what's really funny in Dragon Maid? Yes. When Toru breaks convention by chasing down a purse thief and curb stomping his ass into the ground. You don't typically <laughs> see a Japanese woman do that, but she did, and she was doing it basically wearing cosplay. So everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, I want to say for this for this particular line, and they did keep it in English, because um, the part of the joke was that um, the audio s- is censored. Um, it, it happens in the Japanese and it and it happens in English because she she basically says, um, "If you if you have a ding, then you are considered a man, aren't you?" And that is one of the the recurring things about the show is that these these two characters aggressively support each other about their height issues at times um, to the point where it gets ridiculous Um, because both of them have the exact same issue. So both of them can relate to each other and both of them can get caught up in their feels and emotions. And the other like sometimes literally sometimes figuratively slaps them out of it and they have to do it to each other often. So this is one of the times where she is supporting him because he is down in the dumps because he doesn't feel like a man because of his height. And she is saying your height doesn't make you a man. (laughs) The Uh, only thing that makes you a man (laughs) is something else. Uh, it has nothing to do with your height. Better, that is what she is saying. Uh, if, if you want to check out Sakura, um, sorry, Strawberry Panic, I mean, you're free to do so. I know um, Yuri Hunter, who's uh, one of the sketchy huntsmen. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he he started with that. That was his his road entry to to Yuri in general, um, which I'll always be thankful for because it's always good to have another another guy to commiserate my Yuri fandom with it. <laughs> um, but no, uh, if you want to go down that route, go, go ahead and check it out. I, 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 I will just give my opinion on it unfettered. Um, if you want one that I personally recommend, um, I Hanna blue flower, um, in English, um, or sometimes sweet blue flowers, a sweet blue friend. It has a number of different English names. Highly recommend that one. Um, it is, uh, a, so spell it a O I H A N A. That's, that's how you spell it. It's a very wonderful, a little bit adult, but very wonderful, like coming of age story about girls discovering their sexuality with each other. Um, so do, that's my recommendation for if you're trying to enter Yuri. Um, also, thanks for the confirmation, Kaiser Dragon. I appreciate it. I think I spelled it wrong. I got a different. Well, what, spell it again for me. Kind of, kind of <laughs> uh, Hannah? Kind of, might yeah. Future. AOI. Oh, H-A-N-A. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, Aoi. Okay. A- Aoi. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm terrible at pronouncing that word in Japanese. It's blue. Yeah, it's, I typed it's blue. in, and I got Anohana, the one about, like, the girl who died when she was a little kid, and the, the oh. friends are, like, going through I'm like, that's not a year. You're <laughs> lying. Oh, I didn't watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Blue yeah, it's, it's also it's... good. Yes, I, uh, that's another one I highly recommend. <laughs> um, Princess Principle, I don't know if it qualifies as a Yuri series. It's it's Yuri bait at the very minimum. Um, it's very much in Madoka. They're not really gay. Wink kind of territory. <laughs> um <laughs> It, Twilight will know what I mean. Uh, she'll because we're yeah. gonna watch that. It's on our list. <laughs> oh, um, wait, which is on our list? Princess Principal. Oh, Princess Principal. Uh, it, right, the one that I always get mixed up with Scrapped Princess. <laughs> and then we have a comment from Scrapped Fifty Three. Was there ever any pushback in terms of accurately portraying the characters? Like, were you beholden to anyone to retain the integrity of love complex, love complex, or was it more of a, oh yes, please excise as much transphobia as you can from uh, this? Thank you. The discotheque guys mostly let Lenti do what she wanted. It helps that most of the accurate per lies. character portrayal in the sub is comprised of weird, inconsistent character ticks that never amount to anything. Take Nobu uh, Nobuko's anti-trans radar, for example, which we've already established as a lie. Yep. That comes up maybe three times. She seemingly hates Seiko for no reason, never explains why, and then Seiko walks up to her and says, Nice bracelet. After that, Nobuko decides to be friends with her. What do you mean 83 times before they become friends? She maybe, she becomes friends times. with her maybe in the same three times. May oh maybe. Sorry. That was my bad. I didn't hear it properly. No, I I, I <laughs> my doing that voice I can pour together. Yeah. Um <laughs> I'm going to take turns reading this if you want. Josh, I have not I seen the new film. No, do not spoil any of the new film for me. Thank you for telling me there's a potential confession in there. God <laughs> damn it, Josh. <laughs> ask before ask before you save the, the, the spoiler. Also, also, I will say CBF. Also, disco. He says also, discotech isn't even the ones in charge of the dub. So why would that necessarily matter? Fucking what the hell? It's sound cadence that did the dub. So internally, it would have to go through checks there, right? I mean, you I would think. think I think both of them had addressed this issue because no matter what, he still reflects on both of them as companies. Mm hmm. It's now oh, a good also, time. Also, Sana like Sana uh, com confirms that she, uh, what was it? Nobuko knew, I mean, didn't know she was trans at that point. And she no. was annoyed because she's a cute girl younger than her and was jelly. Yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't know that she was trans at the time. So how would she have a random trans radar? That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's now a good time to mention that... Apparently, all of this is Jello talking out of his ass, and all the changes he tried to make didn't actually even make it into the show at all. Yeah. Well, now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't actually know like to what extent changes were uh, not made in the show. I, I do know that um, the companies have come out and said things like... Um, Everything that we've done, um, he was he was only a person who who wrote the script and it had to go through several layers of editing and stuff like that. It's like, okay, so they probably like reversed most of it by then. Um, and then everything was obviously approved of by the companies later on. It's like, yeah, um, I, I don't think that Japanese companies, unless if. Um, the the original creators or whatever are make something very explicit, like in the case of Fruits Basket with the the changing of the the dub actors for the for the new anime, um, and that was only in Japan that didn't translate over to the English dub where they reprised most of their roles. But I'm pretty sure when it comes to Japanese companies, as long as you don't hurt a very valuable property that will damage their yeah. reputation as a whole, they're going to be kind of chill about it. Mm -hmm. Unless they're mm -hmm. Nintendo. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> the original, like, <laughs> oh, I was going to say, mentioning that a lot of the changes didn't make it in. Now, the problem is, he put at the beginning of this a video 
of different lines that he apparently worked on that did get it in because I don't, I, he wouldn't have the footage otherwise, or maybe he did, and they just they're different in the actual dub. I don't know. What we're what we're analyzing here is the mindset he takes and how it can reflect, I guess, on the larger industry and like yeah. the kind of do's and don'ts of when you're going to translate something. Um, th- he is a very clear. He's a very clear example of what not to do. Because um, mm-hmm. based on his words, it's it, his words imply that he's done a bunch of heavy lifting for the script, and he had to basically completely rewrite several characters to make them passable. But then at the same time, it's like, oh, not much has actually been changed. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to read mm-hmm. most of the, I'm just going to skim this and see what else I can pull from it. Uh, do the original character tree. Like the idea is like they've been hands off. Now let's go over, because we have this pulled up from Discotech Media and yeah. from Sound Cadence Studios. Our statement regarding a contractor who worked on lovely complex English dub. I don't know if this fits on screen. It doesn't. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to live with the people. Um, <laughs> Uh, we are aware of the comments made by a contractor that worked on Lovely Complex. The English version was made with supervision and approval of the show's original producers. Dubs commonly punch up comedy and smooth over rough patches so that the end product aligns with what the show, show's intended audience and provokes the intended response, and there will always be shades of gray when adapting a work. This is all true. Anyone yes. expecting exact fealty to the Japanese dialogue should be watching the subtitles, which uh, it's not true either. That's not true. Which Discotech no. has always presented with as little alteration as pos- uh, as is possible when translating from a very different language. Understandably, I guess they're referring to their own subtitles as opposed to yes. fan subtitles. That's a, probably yes. a little more fair, but I don't know right. how directly their translation is. We are deeply disappointed at this individual's lack of professional discretion and will not be working with him in the future. We will continue to work on future projects with an eye towards satisfying as many fans as possible. Thank you for your continued support. I fully am in support of Discotech. I think that they are a very good company. Um, I know that uh, like maybe things are difficult within the company, but I do genuinely believe that what they do is a labor of love. Like they recently within the past year had come out with Mm. a Blu-ray release of Digimon adventure, the first season of the anime. They haven't yet come out with the the movies or season two or season three, but I hear that they're on the way at some point. And what they did was they painstakingly went through and they upgraded scene a frame by frame every single aspect of the original show to make it better quality than the Blu-ray. They didn't half to do that. Mm -hmm. They did it because they were passionate about their work and they were passionate about the series that they were, that they were um, re-releasing. And let me tell you, there were some issues in the original. And that that is not even getting into Macross. Yeah. That's not even getting into what they've done for Macross. Uh, meanwhile, this is Sound Cadence Studios, which I'm not entirely sure what their role in this was. I'm not entirely sure what the actual flow is. I suppose they're the ones in charge of recording, maybe. Um, we've been made aware of the unofficial and unsanctioned yeah. statements made by a contractor in regards to our lovely complex dub project and wanted to address the post in question. Firstly, no contractor speaks for the Sound Cadence Studios team. All contractors are assembled and retained on a per-project basis. Secondly, regardless of anyone's contract, oh, anyone contractor's personal feelings about a project, all production created at Sound Cadence Studios goes through many layers of supervision. In this case, while this individual did help create scripts for Lovely Complex, those scripts then went through a head writer, two supervisors, and the end client at Discotech, as well as a Japanese licensor, and those scripts were then vetted and approved by all of the parties before being recorded. In no situation would we allow a product that didn't honor the original work to come to market. We thank the fans who have already supported the uh, release and are delighted by the positive reviews of those who have uh, seen the English language version. Now, my only issue with this one, and this is admittedly weighted more in the favor of Sound Cadence's statement, but there is a contradiction here. Because what did he say? Jello said... He called them... No, he said that he 
and uh, Marisa worked on the dub together, and they were um, they actually directed uh, some of the voice acting. Yeah, they're basically like a yeah. writing. Yeah. Uh, it's a mm-hmm. scripts written by Marissa Lenti yeah. and myself, with both of us directing the actors as well. So, yeah, there are several questions I have about this because wouldn't he then know that his scripts ultimately didn't get used? Yeah. But, so why would um, he be bragging about things that didn't make it in? I mean, he's already established himself as a liar. So right. this might just be some weird form of self-flagellation. I I am more inclined to believe them yeah. at this point than Jello because of how he behaves and the things that he says. And, and the things that he says in relation to the Japanese version of the show and the manga. Yes. So... If if he's already lied about that, is, why would he not lie about everything else? Mm-hmm. Which is I, weird because you know there's still the compilation that has some of the lines he's talking about in in the in the freaking archived post here. Um, but for all we know, all of this could just be in, like an extra in the Blu-ray as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. It could be extras yeah. that just didn't get used. I can only imagine he thought this was going to paint him in a positive light somehow. I don't see how he thought that. Yeah, (laughs) I I was going to say, like, either he thought he he was going to come out as a holier-than-thou figure, like a god among men, for translating a terrible anime into something excellent. Which, to be fair, I understand to some degree when you go through a hell you want to celebrate if it was really that painful for him to do. Um, but it, it's not really the case. He doesn't actually do that. It's it's really annoying. Um, yeah. Especially because right. he volunteered. He wasn't paid for yeah, it. it. It's like, he could have stopped at any point. Yes. Um, like, and if it's, like, if he had just painted himself as someone who went through with dedication to volunteer for this project, even if I didn't like it, we would all be here singing his praises. Like, man, you're, you're a good dude. You cut it, your gym. Yeah. No, in this, it sounds like you're just a horrible person that wanted to change something that you didn't understand. Um, and it's either that, that he wanted to come out as some kind of great messiah or Twilight is right. And this is a weird fucking psyop to get people to buy the DVD. Yeah. Like I said, it's my, my tinfoil it's, hat it's hypothesis. Even, <laughs> or it's an even bigger psyop to make the, you know, bad actor localizer crowd uh, see, look even worse. <laughs> but but I don't know how this makes them look worse. Like, at all. Yeah. It like, makes him look worse. I mean, it makes <laughs> him look worse. It does. And it, well, I, people are right. There are people that are rightly complaining that he has completely torpedoed the discussion on on yes. dubs versus subs where no, people look. for the right. longest time have been like, well, uh, have been complaining. And to be fair, there are some people that are openly talking about changing the intent of dubs, uh, to match their yes. personal politic or to match their personal preference. There are people that already talk about it, right. but he is the one that has just gone off in the most like ranting of rants. And it's, he is like the poster yeah. child now of these people that want to change anime from something that they don't like into something that they do while sacrificing the actual right. quality of the product as they do it. Yeah. Like it's one thing to right. try That's to what change. I mean. It's one thing to try to change a dub because you think it would actually benefit the story or characters and you're just accidentally hijacking the actual intention that way. It's another thing to be so like self-aggrandizing as Jello is here, basically painting himself as Dub Messiah mm. for no reason other than clout, yeah. I guess. <laughs> G- Jesus meet Dubus. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I posted uh, Lance five four four five says I posted this earlier. Um, is it is an addition, an attention? Oh. He is an attention whore who surrounds himself with enabler friends and a fan base of woke sims who think he can do no wrong. Just look at the comment section of his vods. I mean, it's very possible. It's a like it. it this is a man that clearly I mean, something has gone to his head. Um, yeah. and it's a lot of hot air. Yeah, dude, dude. I okay. Keep in mind, guys. I'm a Mega Man. Okay, so I only think it 
things in Mega Man terms. In my mm-hmm. terms, this dude would be a, be called a fucking maverick. Okay, yeah. his processor <laughs> just stopped working. Okay, it, I whatever, challenge that AI on the grounds. System has gone rogue. I challenge that on the grounds that Maverick is a cool fucking word, and I don't want it to apply to him. <laughs> yeah. It's Sully, one of the best movies ever. Hot Gun Maverick. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I think... Okay, let's call him... Oh, all right, let's use the Japanese meaning and just call him irregular, then. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's wind down because it's. I, I think we're we're about where we need to be. I think we've covered this topic pretty thoroughly. Yeah. God yeah. damn! Have we transferred over all the uh, fan art into the uh, chat? Yeah, uh, except for the one you didn't like. Oh. Yes, <laughs> uh, that is, of course. Yeah, we're not showing that one on screen. I'm not I'm not justifying that one. <laughs> Uh, no. all right. Well, I let's... I will encourage everyone yep, to watch her. Lovely Complex. It is a very funny show. Um, yes. you can I like you can watch it in in English if you do prefer. Like I we as as much as um we despaired about Jello's involvement in it. I don't think that the dub was actually that bad. I have nitpicks about yeah. it. But it's it's a a perfectly serviceable dub, um, and the fact that most yeah, people there, did that some... volunteer just made it a lot more uh, admirable. But it is Heartful. it is a yeah. perfectly good anime that I think a lot of people would enjoy if chocolate you love corn, you baby, Dederex, Dederex, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Anyway, uh, this is uh, yeah, Dederex's... I would, yeah. I would definitely recommend this as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, uh, so this is Dedarex using Celtic or Kelfie as Tweety Bird. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was this one described as? With your 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 nightmares, the the gut sword. Oh the yeah, it's sword. my nightmares over Berserk 2016 because <laughs> in Berserk 2016 and 17. They have the, every time guts hit something with the dragon slayer, it has this pots and pants clang sound effect. You ruined it! You ruined it! Uh, here's me as uh, the yokai I whisper, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I offer you this fine read. Yeah, you're a butt <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Critter's tinfoil hat, which is just so <laughs> fucking cute. It is. It and it looks so good too. Like that's stylish as hell. <laughs> it, look, it looks exactly like something you would actually make, Critter. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> uh. Here's like, me. I swear, I feel like this looks similar to something you put in your videos before. <laughs> uh, here's me waiting to dine with the kobold cook from that one uh, manga. Honestly, it's an isekai, so the, the name, it's one of those long, stupid names for an isekai. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Gotcha. And then here's the best one. Here comes the Oscar best Oscar Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Dadarex just knocking it out of the park for this one. Yes. I can't help but love Oscar Pine in the, the fairly odd parent style. It's so, it works too well. It looks so good. <laughs> it does look good. Uh, I might change my profile to that one after the stream. Uh, <laughs> mine yeah. i changed <laughs> mine to me screeching yes i um, love that one so much uh, this is from yeah, chronosphere it's... right this next one i uh uh yeah uh who yeah if it's drew from, us these a, next two are from chronosphere drew us approaching uh jello apocalypse uh i guess we're, we're... and then the freaking shimigami tensei boss music just plays <laughs> in the back <laughs> we gotta do an all-out attack on it yeah and then finally never see it come back. jello explaining his career 
uh, where he's just escalating as pro VA yep. author, uh, and then him at the top of importance. <laughs> it's God. I cannot believe he, someone he, is so. He seems conceited. like the. Yeah. Like, just, yeah, not, he not, seems like in, in a, a person who would actually do the step one, step two, step three profit thing unironically. <laughs> Legitimately. Um, it, look, it, to be fair to a lot of people out there, to be a YouTuber at all takes a level of ego. I certainly have a level yeah. of ego. I don't deny that. Yeah. But you cannot let it control you. You cannot let it absolutely yeah. malform your view of the world you need mm -hmm. to have limits on yourself if you don't you're going to wind up becoming an awful person and it seems to me that jello is following that pattern pretty harshly mm -hmm. oh is that why i haven't he's, released he's a video following... in two years i have no ego so i'm a really bad youtuber <laughs> <laughs> let's make no assumptions you don't have you don't have that grind set in you. You don't have that no, grind like, set. No, like literally part of the reason why the video got finished uh on time, like well, almost on time. It took half a month past the deadline that it did, was partially because of spite and partially because Raymond was cheering me on. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good combo of motivation. Yeah. Spite <laughs> and a personal cheerleader. Spite yes. is literally what led me down my 100%. entire career path, and I have... Probably shouldn't have let it do that, but you know what? I'm I'm here now. I might as well live with it. <laughs> well, like I I kept mm -hmm. finding in my research, I kept finding these articles, these garbage articles that were like Pokemon, uh, Digimon is just a, po a knockoff of Pokemon, and I'm like, no, why do you do this? <laughs> I'm so angry. And then and then I would have people come to me. And then I would mention that, like, yeah, I love Digimon. Digimon is one of my favorite anime. And they'd be like, oh, that Pokemon knockoff? And I'm like, mm. <laughs> it, it Legitimately, it's insane. one of my favorite things to tease <laughs> yeah. her with, just as a joke. It's, it's cool. Yes. <laughs> she hates it. I do yeah. so much. <laughs> we all See, have our pet peeves. We See, all have our pet peeves. Yeah, I get angry over Oscar. Twilight gets angry over the Pokemon Digimon thing. <laughs> yep. Uh, um, Raymond. Raymond is my Otani days. to my Riza. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh. All right. Well, let's. Oh my God. Let's wind down this stream. Any final thoughts, ladies and gents? Um, I think that uh, well, like th there's nothing really to say other than what we've said before that Jello is. A lying liar who lies, who <laughs> it, it just just does. He's he's a lying piece of shit, and I don't understand why he felt the need to do this. And I think that he hurt a lot more than helped with anything. And I hope that things get better from here. And I I just just watch Lovely Complex. It's it's such a cute anime, and I think that there's not a lot of shows that actually explore what it's like to be rejected by someone that you're in love with and exploring that uh, to some some modicum of serious degree. Like, there's still a lot of comedy in those episodes, but the comedy has toned down for the scenes where the character is crying and can barely get out of bed um, in some cases, and her friends are all there to support her because it affects her so much. And then, uh, like... Um, just all of that. Like, you don't see that very often, so I appreciate it for that. I think that that, that sort of thing is is very good to have in a show like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all that I have to say. Watch watch Lovely Complex. It's good. <laughs> uh, my final thoughts? Hashtag stay humble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... My thought, final thoughts, uh, if I were to uh, get on my green mouse for a tiny <laughs> bit, um, on top of everything that uh, I think uh, that Twilight said about the show, granted, I haven't gone as far with it, but this, is, this show is definitely really decent. I recommend anyone watch it, despite the circumstances that led us discovering it. But most importantly, to address Brandon... 
he's the exact kind of person that does not and does not deserve, nor should he ever get involved in the anime industry ever again. Is the and is the perfect example of the kinds of people. Granted, there are set few bad actors who give the people who are actually at the front lines, at the at the on the ground working on this stuff uh, 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 sincerely and with the utmost professionalism, a bad, bad, bad name. Okay, low cows like him do not come very often. He is perfect fodder for the outrage merchants who do not want to actually explore the topic or give alternatives, but to just simply shit on, you know, the people that they don't like, either just because they think they're just that cringe or because of their political views inherently, whether or not it was that they are actually good. And that shit is fucking toxic to me. So, to anyone who actually wants to explore the topic outside of this, there's a great article from NicheGamer.com, albeit I will say that this shit is a tiny bit biased in its own sense, but I will absolutely, I'm linking in chat right now, there's this great article that highlights a bunch of different localization changes, the effects that they have on the stories, the even some of the behind the scenes reasonings, uh, behind these changes to just explore and expand the discussion surrounding it because goddamn we fucking need it here and discotech uh y'all are the fucking champions 110 percent. let's fucking go yeah all righty thank you for coming to my tech talk <laughs> <laughs> all right well i they basically said everything i was gonna say so i'm, I'm just gonna wrap up here thank you all so much for joining <laughs> us we've had a <laughs> We had a fun time. I like trying to diversify and find interesting topics to talk about. Uh, though, again, next week, hopefully, unless uh, something else explodes in our, our, our more commonly associated circle, uh, we should be getting like back Jello to Like Jello responds to us? Oh, my God. I would I would die. I don't know what would happen, but it would be amazing. Um, B.S. Uh, unless something crazy happens, expect us to cover Volume 7 next week. Uh but yeah, other than that, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, oh, yeah, right, wait. Uh, any any last minute plugs? Anyone? Yeah, I'm almost done with my big has been hotel review. Hopefully, I finish it tomorrow or the Ooh. next day. It's gonna be over an hour long, I think. Ooh. I'm I'm almost done. All I'm right. so close to finishing it. <laughs> hey, I'm excited. In my case, yeah, I'm excited too. That's great. Um, in my case, I'm going to be recording for the big response video that I'm working on this week. And then hopefully I should be able to put it out at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be really, really special. Um, I still haven't been able to do much because I am dog sitting for my mom and because my computer is broken, um, that means that I have to plug in my computer to a TV in order to look at the screen. And her TV is a lot smaller than the one in my bedroom at my, at my grandpa's place. So, uh, I haven't been able to do any work. <laughs> I did figure out how to do a virtual machine though. Uh, and that is, um, for my next Digimon video. So I got some progress there. Uh, and finally, uh, I've, well, I, we just released the Full length version, the the theatrical length version of Fixing Ruby Volume One. So that's out. You guys can go view it now. It has a bit of new art in there, uh, some refined scenes, a little more color and the like. Uh, all the sketches put their love and heart into it, and I did too. It it just it came out an excellent volume. Um, and on top of that, I released again my short story, The Wild Kings, available now uh, as a digital book or a digital short story on Amazon. And again, look forward to seven more short stories coming down the pipeline, every, one every single week. This week on Friday is where uh, you can actually already pre-order um, the Exile Unintended, which is the next one in the line. Highly recommend them. I had a lot of fun writing them, and I really hope you guys pick them up. All right. So anyway, well, I think that's all for now. 
Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you all on the flip side.